changed districts for this year. We were moved uh, our district in 2A last year. Lloyd moved up to 3A. Uh, Holy Cross moved down to 1A, and Newport moved down to 1A. So we had to be redistricted, and we're in with Ca uh, Gallatin County, Walton Verona, uh, Owen County, Carroll County, and one other school that escapes me. I think, uh, who's the other one, Murph? Who's the other one who we're in? Owen County, Owen Gallatin. County, Bracken County. Bracken, County. that's the yeah. one. So our new district, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Beachwood Tigers for their uh, third of five home games in a row. Five home games in a row. Here's our third one. We're playing uh, How about that? Gallatin County tonight. Interesting scheduling. Next year it's going to be real interesting, all these road games. Yeah, real interesting is a great way to put it. Uh, Mark Grink, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Grant 100 times tonight. Uh, Gallatin County comes in tonight a 3-1 and one record. Um, but that doesn't quite tell the tale of what this team is or isn't. Uh, Gallatin County, 3-1, uh, and one, but they play, they have played the softest schedule in Class 2A football so far this year. Ah. Uh, this is a program that has struggled mightily for, for the last couple of years. Uh, they don't, they're, they're not rich in numbers, um, and this is going to be a tough matchup for them here tonight. Uh, they average about 249 yards of offense on the ground. But, Mark, they are a heavy, heavy ground offense. Yeah. They have a hard time passing the ball. They've got some talent in their skill position players. But, you know, as we've seen over the years, very tough for teams that are short on numbers, short on talent to come into Fort Mitchell and one dimensional. With, a, with, a, yeah. with a ground game only yeah. and do much of anything. This is a very – this is a brutal matchup. Uh, for for Gowton County tonight to face these uh, Beachwood Tigers, indeed. The Beachwood Tigers come in here four and one. Lost our first game of the year last year against Covington Catholic in a haymaker barn burner. Whoa, Nelly! Yes, Football sir. game That's that a was. Great way to put it. Other oh, Tigers jumped out to a 21 zip lead, and Covcat to their credit came back. It was 24-14 at halftime on a uh, Colson Lair 27-yard field goal to close out the first half. And, you know, 24-14, you're thinking, all right, have a chance. But, you know, give Covington Cap the credit. Both teams played very hard. Covcat came out smart, scored a couple of touchdowns, jumped out 28-24 on us. Then Clay got hurt. We ran that Wildcat, which worked tremendously very, well. Very effective. Scored yeah. a touchdown in, in about three plays, and we're up 31-28 thinking, okay, here we go. And great, great football game. A lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, that, that Wildcat that, the formation that we saw uh, yeah. in, in between uh, Luke Urban and Tyler Fryman, uh, eight carries for 83 yards. Wow. Uh, so, you know, a little over 10 yards a carry. <laughs> um, you know, just it, it was effective. and. Uh, but Clay's good. Uh, he came back out for the uh, for the for the end of yes, the game, he and he's he's healthy tonight. Good to see. Uh, and uh, for Gowton County, you know, it's going to be tough defending this uh, this passing attack that has just been so effective. Yeah. Uh, currently, right now, passing attack number four in the state of Kentucky, averaging 340 yards per game through the air. Uh, you know. Quite frankly, Gowton County, uh, you know, while, as I said, they do have some talent, they don't have the defensive backs to, to, to uh, cover all these I don't all think too weapons. many teams do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so uh, uh, just a brutal matchup. Clay should have a great game tonight, and, and uh, you know, I expect this game to get uh, to a running clock. Uh, and we'll, start, we'll be able to see some of our second stringers, some of our yeah. JV guys. Yeah, and, that'll be great. And, uh, you know, it'll be great to talk about some of those guys and, uh, you know, what they bring to the table. So, yeah. yeah. Clay Hayden comes into this game, for those of you at home, 146 passing attempts, 103 completions, two interceptions in 103 completions for 1,701 yards, 19 touchdowns, <laughs> averaging 340 yards a game. I am glad, Kevin Gray and Murph, that I drafted him in my fantasy football league. Well, you all laughed been. at me. He, he I, I said, I got Clay Hayden. Yeah. He's lighting it up. <laughs> what a great pick that would have been for a league like that. I mean, just just such a such a magical start to his junior season. Uh, you know, the numbers that you just read off, uh, so impressive. He comes in ranked second in the state in passing yards per game. Unbelievable. Uh, 340, number one, Northern Kentucky, number two in the state behind only Blaze Berry from Eminem. Eminence wow. High School, so yeah. little, little single yeah. Eminence used to play there, running the run and shoot down there. Yeah. With, uh, I guess June Jones might be on the uh, <laughs> coaching staff there. Uh, and so, in terms of touchdown passes, he is uh, in a t in a four way tie for third place. Blaze Berry, twenty four. Uh, is number one, uh, Owensboro Catholics, really impressive junior quarterback Brady Atwell with 21, and then uh, also tied with Clay at 19, Cole Hodge from Cal, Cam O'Hara from Cooper, and Tate Rice from Clay County. Uh, he's second in yards uh, with 1,701, 
and uh, eighth, eighth in completion percentage is 70.5%. I mean, just, just remarkable, all state numbers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's just done everything you could possibly want him to do. He's displayed toughness. He's displayed a, you know, a field vision and a leadership ability that uh, is, is as good as it was last year. It's, it's, it's eons better this year. Um, just a just a tremendous quarterback, but you know it, the other thing is too when you've got the uh, amount of weapons that this team has. Yes. You know, you know we've seen early in the season we saw it was the uh, Luke Erdman and James Cusick, Cusick show in the last two weeks. Tyler Fryman, the impressive freshman, has yep. emerged as one of the you know most impressive weapons in in Northern Kentucky. Um, you know, and, and then oh by the way you've got Talon Linder, you've got Luke Sleet, you've got Chase Flaherty catching balls out of the backfield. You know the uh, it's just been a really, really nice first half of the season, as we talked about at the end of last week. Um, and I think, you know, this going into our district, which is, you know, frankly put, you know, this is a this is a weak district. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in barring some sort of miracle, this is going to be, you know, a, a sweep in district play for for Beachwood. Um, you know, the, you have to find, you know, the victories and in, in, in the things you can accomplish during the stretch. I think the number one goal is establish, get, finding out, you know, a way to get the running game going. Yeah. You know, with Chase, with Chase Flaherty. And, Great point. You know, o- only averaging 88 yards yeah. a game, Irv, on yeah. the ground. But the 340 in the air skews all of that. Yeah. And, and our guys who can catch a ball, Luke Urban's averaging 100 yards per game. 26 catches for 500 yards. Tyler Fryman almost averaging 100 a game, 489 yards, 23 catches. Those two combined over 12 touchdowns. I mean, I don't know who you cover. You can't cover Fryman, it's, Cusick, it's, and Urban yeah. together. I'm well, sorry. You yeah, can't but, do it. And, and the reason why developing and establishing a running game is so important is because that, that uh, you know, that run and shoot and throwing the ball all over teams works against – Medium, uh, medium ability teams and 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 p- uh, poor ability teams. It's not going to work against LCA. Yep. It's not going to work against uh, you know Mayfield or yeah. Owensboro Catholic. So really important that we get that, get that going. I do, going. I do no see doubt. that uh, you know uh, being a key tonight for Jay Volker and his crew. Now the one thing I do wonder is. Do we see the Wildcat tonight? Yeah, it'll be interesting because, I mean, that works so well, yeah. Murph. And, I mean, Covington Catholic looked clueless trying to stop that. Yeah. They yeah. had no answer, and it was really working. Incredible. Beachwood is going to receive the opening kickoff. We are about ready to go. Gallatin County in white shirts and blue pants. Beachwood in their home red tops and white pants. Deep for the Tigers. Tyler Fryman, Luke Erdman, and James Cusick are all deep, three deep. Mark, uh, Gallatin County State Coach Tim Browning in his 18th season. He started in 2006 when this Gallatin County football program began. Wow. Uh, in those 18 years, 78 wins, 107 losses. Uh, they have not had a winning year since 2016. It's a squib kick fielded by a Beachwood short man. Going to take it up to about the 47. Can't see who picked that up. Nice job. Squib kick. Beachwood's going to start off first and 10 on their own 47 for their first possession. Clay Hayden is coming out. Heard he hurt his shoulder against Covcat late Murph, but he's out here today. Yeah, he, uh, I think that was I think that was Cohen Henderson on the uh, on the return there. Nice for, job yeah. for Beachwood. <clears throat> Clay Hayden's going to be in a shotgun. We'll be saying that a lot tonight. Three, two receivers to his left, three to his right. Uh, Gowton in a 52 front. Clay Hayden, quick throw out complete to Cusick, I believe. He picks up some yards at the 40, inside the 35, tossed out of bounds about the 34. James Cusick, that plays open all the time. Yeah, 19-yard pickup there on the, on the first play of the game. Not from, bad. Uh, from Clay to James Cusick. Nice job there. Missed tackle by Gowton at the uh, point of the catch. Can't, they cannot miss tackles uh-huh. like that tonight if they want this to not go to a running clock very quickly. First and 10, Beachwood on the Gallatin County 33, first possession of the game. Beachwood in shotgun, two receivers to his right hand off to Chase Flaherty, and he just got tripped up. Don't know if he tripped on his own guy, he would have scored. He got down to about the Gallatin County 25, pickup of eight. Yeah, nice job there on the uh, left side of the offensive line to pick up a blitz by Gallatin County's middle linebacker. Uh, Chase uh, dodged that blitz perfectly, sidestepped it, and uh, was able to pick up nine yards. Second and two, they're calling it, ball on a 25, two receivers to either side of Clay. Flaherty in the backfield. Clay looks to his right, rolls to his right, still rolling. Got a man chasing throws over the middle, complete to Fryman. Beautiful throw. Picks up the first down, takes it down to the Gallatin County 20. Yeah, nice job by Clay there, using his feet to make something happen. Got some good pressure from uh, the defensive lineman for Gallatin County. He was able to complete a pass to Tyler Fryman. Uh, Fryman on the season, 23 catches, 489 yards, five 
wow. touchdowns. Uh, he had three touchdowns, uh, four touchdowns against uh, Simon Kenton, three yeah. through the air and one on the ground. He has been game-changing. Two receivers line up to Clay on the first and 10 from the Gallatin County 19. Ooh, Flaherty ooh. takes a hole. Flag comes. And in the shotgun, Roberts behind him in the backfield. Two receivers to his left, two to his right. One comes in motion. Xander Rigg was showing pressure. Yeah, we're going to do start. a false start here. Call on Gallatin County. It's going to cost him five yards. It'll be second down and 15. The ball will be spotted inside the Gallatin County 20. Joe Roberts was going to come back and get that handoff and do an end around there, yeah. but it never happened. Yeah, tough. It, 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 this, and this is the tough thing. As we look at the uh, the offensive line for Gallatin County, uh, a very undersized, small. I'm sure they're athletes. But, you know, again, when you're talking about Beachwood knows they're going to run the ball, you know, they're, they're going to show pressure. Pressure causes false starts. Yeah. And that's, that's what happened right there. Great call there. Haynes in the shotgun, three receivers to his right, two to his left. He gets a snap, quarterback keeper up the middle. Haynes starts to his left, picks up a couple of yards, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage, call it about the 22-yard line. It'll be a third and 10 here coming up for Gallatin. Yeah, nice job there by uh, Xander Rigor to keep contained to push Haynes back inside. Uh, Haynes, a six foot one, 230-pound quarterback. He's a big boy, and he yeah. can move. Uh, he's got 89 yards rushing on 20 carries and one touchdown on the season. Haynes getting a play call from his coach over on the sidelines. 8-12, 8-10 to go, clock running, first quarter. Beachwood jumped out to a 7 to nothing lead on Gallatin County on their first possession. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Haynes in the shotgun again. Ready Joe well, Roberts in the back. Oh, here they come. Picked up nicely, though, and complete out to the outside. He's going to pick up one or two yards. It was complete out there to Damian Jenkins. He picks up about two on the play. It'll be fourth and eight. Yeah, nice uh, nice coverage there in the flats by, by the Beachwood outside linebacker and corner uh, to prevent that from really getting a, into any anywhere close to, uh, close to the first down marker. And now uh, Gowan County in a tough spot. They're yeah. going to have to kick the ball. From, uh, you know, pretty deep in their own territory against a really good punt return team of the <laughs> Beachwood Tigers. Two guys standing back there at their own 41 are Tyler Fryman and Luke Urban. Really don't want to kick it to either of them. He's not yeah, going to. The is. ball snapped over his head. On, the Lee. punter back in the end zone. He gets out for a safety and tackled down at about the one. Beachwood will have it first and 10 on the one-yard line on the high snap. My goodness. Yeah, don't that's, need that. Yeah, that's uh, – you know, again, it's uh, we've seen it for so many years, Mark Talley, this, this Beachwood program so uh, so good. And when they're playing at their top like they're doing right now, when you come in with a team that's just, you know, struggling or not at that level, they, they, they can instill some, some rattle into <laughs> yeah, the opponents. And, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. The false start on the first, uh, yeah. the, first, the second play, and, you know, now the bad snap. You know, you know if you're an offensive lineman or a snapper that Beachwood's coming after you in a situation <laughs> like this. First and goal, Beachwood. Ball on the Gatlin County one after the snap went over the punter's head. He was able to get it out to the one. Hayden in the shotgun. Flaherty joins him in the backfield. He looks to his right, throws to his right. Touchdown, Tyler Fryman. Quick yeah. hitch, end zone touchdown. Uh, it's Talon Linder on the oh, touchdown, Oh, sorry, Linder, actually. good yeah. catch. So uh, Clay Hayden to Talon Linder for the, uh, for the score. Uh, as easy as it gets right there, great route run by Talon. That's his first touchdown uh, you know, of the season. So great to, see this, great to see him get into the end zone. Uh, and Clay Hayden just adds another number to his impressive uh, touchdown passes of the year. That's his. That's number 20. How could I screw that up? Talon's first touchdown and not give it to Fryman, <laughs> man. That's, that's un, un, unfortunate. Colson Lair out for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up. It is good. With 7.06 to go first quarter, Beachwood 14. Gallatin County, nothing. So, Mark, just taking a look at the RPI rankings. Yeah, you know, as I said, I'm in my uh, third week of class at NKU <laughs> yeah, on that. You're gonna, you've, you've, you've only got about 30 quiz. hours left. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in terms of District Five, where we're at, um, Beachwood, a clear, clear cut number one, and you have to go all the way down to number 13 
to get to uh, the second team in the district at Carroll County at two and three. Uh, there's a very small separation between them and Walton Verona at number 15. And then you got a pretty good drop down to 21 and 22, which is Owen, Owen County and Bracken County. Mm -hmm. And Gowton County currently sitting in 26th place. And again, Gowton County, you know, they do come in three and one, but they play three three poor teams. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's, you can't really get much from the record. Um, you know, Gowton County, it's, it's again, you know, this team has struggled so mightily. They haven't had a winning uh, record in so many years. Tough matchup tonight for them. Colson Lair kicking off for the Tigers deep, and it's going to bounce out of bounds. Gallatin County will take over after the penalty. So, Mark, the, uh, Gallatin County, um, they haven't had a winning season since 2016. It, during that, that year, they were 6-5. and five. Uh, Before that, their previous winning year was 2013, which is the best year in, the, in Gallatin County's program history. Uh, they went 10-3 and three and made it to the third round of the playoffs before losing to NCC. I think our AD, Ryan Booth, was the quarterback uh, so. down there, wasn't he? Got, he? Wasn't he, he the quarterback he down there, He could talk coach? to us a little bit yeah, about that. Yeah, we're going to have to find out some stories about this. 7.06 to go. Gallatin County coming out for their second possession. Their first one ended in disaster so, with a snap going over the punter's head. So, Mark, let's see if you remember. Do you, we've only played Gallatin County once. We'll, we'll come back okay. to that. Stack backfield here for Gallatin County. Snap goes handoff to the eye back and in, into the pile. Going to go right back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. Don't see who was tackled. I think half of the Beachwood defensive line in on that tackle. Yeah, Joe Roberts again on the carry for uh, for Gowton County last week against Berea, 14 carries and 108 yards. Yeah. So he does, he's a, he's a nice player. But again, you know Beachwood, this this front is just so coached so well. Yeah. They're so talented. Going to be tough. Gowton County wishbone. in the wishbone here. We got Anthony Haynes under center. He takes a snap, hands it to the back number four. Oh, Bryson Strub, and he is brought down immediately ah. at the line of scrimmage. Jack Meyer. Wow. You know, yeah, Jack Meyer's had another. Young man who's had such a great yes. start to his junior season. Uh, Meyer just shed his blocker and, and bear hugged Joe Roberts and brought him down for no gain at the line of scrimmage. I hate to jump ahead, Murph, but how good is this team going to be next year? Well, it's going to be wow. really, really good. Anthony Haynes in the shotgun this time on third and ten. Beachwood ah. guy might have jumped. They got yep. us on that one. Maybe. Yep. Offside on Beachwood, it'll be third and five now. The ball will be spotted out on the Gallatin County 40. 6.07 to go first quarter, 14-0 Beachwood. So, Mark, do you remember the last time these two teams played? The only time these two teams played? You should remember. Was, uh, yeah. I think you were around for this game. Was it uh, – it was down there, wasn't it? No, it was here. No, two thousand again. No, November 5th, 2010. We'll come back to oh, that yeah, in just oh, a second. Oh, yeah, man, way back. Haynes coming out here for a third and five in the shotgun. Two receivers, two is left, one to his right. One comes in motion, hands it off to Bryson Strub again. He tries to take it outside, loss of two. Tackle down at about the 38-yard line by Tyler Fryman. Good tackle. I'm sorry, Luke Urban. Yeah, Bryson Straub, the, uh, one of the three, the uh, second or third back for Gallatin. Uh, you know, uh, not not a lot of touches this year, and they, they tried to use the speed there to get around the edge, but that's uh, it's not going to happen tonight. Call it fourth down and about really about seven here for Gallatin County, and they're going to go for it. Haynes comes out in the shotgun. Joe Roberts joins him in the backfield. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. Here comes Brody. Waddell. Yeah, Haynes in this time. Timeout. Timeout. Called by Gallatin County. We'll stay right here with you. 526 to go first quarter. Beachwood 14, Gallatin County nothing. Thanks for tuning in. We've got uh, – Two more home games after this, Murph. An interesting season. Five home games in a row, man. It's yeah. been interesting. Let's talk about that November 5th, 2010 game. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Gowton County. Okay. Yeah. So that was the first round of the single-A playoffs mm. that year. That uh, it, that game ended with a 55 to nothing Beachwood victory. Um, the, the three weeks later, Beachwood unfortunately fell to Mayfield 38-14 uh, in the state yeah, semifinals yeah. here at Beachwood. Yeah. Uh, Cameron in the in the first round game of the victory over Gallatin County, our good friend Cameron Vokey, remember yes, that name? Yes, sir. How about the game he had? 11 carries, 144 yards, and four touchdowns. Wow. Uh, Gage Erdman, Max Nussbaum, yeah. Jake Kramer, all with rushing TDs. Uh, Michael Colosimo, a touchdown pass to, to Corey Cruzy. Yes. And uh, the Tigers racked up 432 yards against Gallatin County now, that night. Do you know who Corey Cruz is? Yes. Yes, Truly Rash's yes, son. Of course I no, do. Yes. Okay, all right. Corey, man, he's doing great. He works now down in Jacksonville for the PGA. He's doing that? great stuff. Anthony Haynes in the shotgun again. Fourth Tough down spot. and seven. Sure is. Three receivers again. It was right, one to his left. 
Blitz coming from the Tigers. They're bringing it. Haynes rolls out to his right under big pressure yeah, now. Xander and Riggler. Xander Riggler brings him down for a big loss. Back to his 30. Yeah, Xander Riggler and Maddox Kelly on the uh, on the sack there. And again, you know, just uh, really tough for Gowton County's undersized offensive line. Beachwood brought two blitzers, two linebackers in the uh, the B gap on one side, C gap on the other, uh, and they were they were able to hold for just a just a second. But because of the talent of those linebackers, yeah. they were able to get off there and cause cause havoc. Beachwood comes out first and ten on the Gallatin County 30, leading 14 to nothing with 5:19 to go in the first quarter. Hayden comes in in an I formation. Gets the ball, hands it to Chase Flaherty going around the right side, 25-20. One man to beat, he gets by him, 15-10. Cuts it back inside the 10, down to the 5. He's going to be brought down right at about the 5. Nice run there by Chase. Yeah, 25-yard run there by, by Chase Flaherty. And again, we talked about earlier the importance of establishing a running game tonight, getting Chase some confidence, getting this offensive line some confidence. Yeah. Great blocking there by fullback Xander Riggler. He had a nice seal block on the right side at the second level to open up a little bit of room for Chase on the edge. Luke Urban check backs in for Beachwood. It's going to be first down and goal from the Gallatin County 6. 4.49 to go first quarter. Beachwood up 14 to nothing here. Third possession of the game for Beachwood. Hayden in the shotgun again. Chase Flaherty joins him in the backfield. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Luke Urban comes in motion, and he's going to get it on a jet sweep pitch, and he goes around the 10, 5, cuts it back up, 3, he's 2, 1, in. touchdown. Yeah, great, great, great run. Play. Sure was. Luke Urban in from six yards out. For how many touchdowns is that for him now? That is his eighth TD on the year. I'm sorry, ninth TD yep. on the year. Fantastic job. So that goes down as a, as a touchdown pass. That was a touchdown pass. pass. Yeah, he so threw it forward, yeah. yeah. Colson Lair out for the extra point. We're at 428 to go in the first quarter. Beachwood 20, Gallatin County nothing. Thank you for tuning in to our new district here, District 6 in 2A. The snap is back, hold is down, kick is up. Colson Lair is money in the bank. 21 to nothing here, Beachwood to, jumps out to an early lead. Uh, I see, I see Coach Gray, Murph, a yeah. running clock in our future. <laughs> yeah, I tell, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, the, again, Luke Erdman, uh, who's had such a great junior oh year. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, you know, and he can just do so many things, but just so, showed that, that next level elite speed. I mean, they didn't have any chance. No. Once, once he got out past the tackle, he was going into the end zone no matter what. So a great run right there, great play design. Uh, and Clay Hayden now tied for second in the state with 21 touchdown passes, now tied with Brady Atwell from Owensboro Man, Catholic. Great, great this, play. This good Beachwood offense is just so good. I mean, right now, you know, averaging 427 yards of offense through the air, 340, as you said earlier, uh, 427 overall, 340 through the air, 87 on the ground. Unbelievable. I mean, just, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of great passing yeah. attacks. I'm not sure we've seen a better one than this. Yeah. Colson Lair kicking off again. Too deep for Gallatin County, and again, it might bounce yeah, out, of out of bounds. Out of bounds Unfortunately, again. it does. Gallatin County is going to take it over again on their own. Uh, 25, I believe. You know what Murph got me last week is, you know, because every year we kind of ask our question, how good is this team? Yes. We know yep. we're good. This but is then about the time we ask that we'll question. We'll really yeah. find out against the Covington Catholics and the Dixies and uh, Simon Kenton. We played Covington Catholic, and our offense looked like – the 84 Chargers with Fouts throwing yeah, it around. Yeah. And I was like, holy man, yeah. how good is this offense? Yeah, it's, it's, it's it was eye-opening. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really good. Um, and, and it's going to be really hard for anyone in 2A to, to contain us yeah. uh, over four quarters. Gallatin County in the wishbone starting from their own 25. Hands it to about the second guy through. He might get one yard, toss back at about the 37. Give him a, two yards on that second and eight. Yeah, it's uh, Dawson Schluter. Uh, junior running back on the carry for uh, Gowton County. He is uh, the uh, one of the top backs for uh, Gowton County. 81 carries, two touchdowns. 81 yards on 20 carries and two touchdowns this year. Anthony Haynes getting a play call from this coach. Four minutes even to go first quarter. Beachwood 21. Gowton County nothing on a couple of touchdown passes by Clay Hayden and a run by Chase Flaherty. What I love about this team, you know, you talk about how good can this team be. I love uh, one the passing attack, but but the toughness of this yes. team, the resiliency. Yeah. They never ever quit. Great you know, point. And, and even no matter how tough, how hard the slap is to their face, they never back down. Haynes coming out for a second and eight and shotgun this time. He gets it, fakes a handoff through. He's going to keep it himself and runs into a wall led by, I believe that was Xavier Campbell and a host of others. We'll see. 
Beachwood's yeah. defensive line is feasting tonight. Yeah, and right now, really, what's happening is on the on the front part of the line, J uh, Jack Meyer is just yes. uh, causing all kinds of chaos. They can't block him uh, right there. He just split a double team and was able to get to the ball carry again, another ball hug or bear hug and <laughs> and throw down essentially. I mean, he's just too. Jack has been he's, great this he's year. Too, he's yes. too strong. He's too athletic. They haven't seen anything like this against the four teams they played. Jack Meyer has been fantastic this season. Third down and seven. Ball on the thirty-seven. Gallatin County in shotgun. Haynes goes back, throws back, throws a screen, oh, but no almost. one was there. Almost picked off there. Yeah, Unlucky. Tough, tough spot there. Almost picked off. Let's see who that is. Who's number 27? 27. Don't have that on my roster yeah, we here. Don't have that on, Must on be a fresh or a, you know, well, we are going to have some freshmen playing tonight, yeah, Murphy. That'll be good. Get some underclassmen in here getting some experience. It'll be great. Gallatin County out the punt again. Their first one didn't go so good. Snapped over his head, and they ended up uh, yeah, first and goal to, on the one. How many times have we seen this over the years, these teams that, that can't snap against the Tigers because of the rush? Well, there's yeah. a good one. Good for good them snap. there. Almost Ball got it almost blocked. blocked. The punt is going to be fielded by Erdman at his own 31. He takes it at 35, 40. He's got some room. 45, cuts it back. Cuts it back again, going to take it out to about the 49-yard line. Nice play there by Luke. Beachwood comes out first and 10. Yeah, nice tackle by Anthony Haynes there yeah. uh, for, for Gowton County. Had he not made that tackle, I think <laughs> Luke, who was just fighting like crazy to, to get find an opening, he might have picked up a lot more ground on, the, on that uh, return. You know, how good did they look a week ago they running that Wildcat? Yeah. I mean, yeah. man, that looked unstoppable. Yeah. Well, I was, it, you know, at that point, you know, that point and then the first, you know, the first quarter, I mean, they just looked like they looked like they could match anyone in the yeah. state. And, yeah. and and I think that's something for Jay Volker and his staff to build on, even though the game didn't go the way we wanted, you know, to, yeah. to be able to figure out, and, 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 you know, a way to, to bottle that yeah. and, and, you know, add it to uh, the entire package. It was such an impressive performance. A penalty takes the ball all the way back to the 31. Hayden in the shotgun. He's going to throw it out in the flat there to Chase Flaherty. Chase catch a 30, 40, 45, 50. Has one man to beat, gets by him, gets some help, takes it all the way down to about the Gallatin County 41. On That play has worked in all season as well, too, that yeah. quick throw out to Flaherty in the backfield. Well, Chase Flaherty, won now one of the most trusted receivers yeah. for Clay Hayden. He's been so great catching the ball out of the backfield the last three weeks. How about these numbers? Uh, 17 catches for 192 yards wow. in the last three weeks. Tremendous. I mean, he's just been really, really good. He had that uh, touchdown to, you know, uh, the, the the touchdown in overtime against Dixie. He's yeah. just he's become such a great weapon out of the backfield. First and 10 Tigers, Hayden in the shotgun. Flaherty joins him in the backfield, two receivers to either side. Luke Urban comes in motion, again fakes the jet sweep in, passes out to Cusick. And Cusick gets it down to inside the 30, 20, inside the 20, down to the 18. Nice quick hitch. I believe that's Cusick. Picks up another first down inside the Gallon and County 20. Well, it is, and a great block on the edge there by Xavier Campbell to, to open up the, of the room needed for James Cusick. Uh, so big play right there. Uh, Cusick uh, on the season. He comes in 244 yards, receiving on 20 carries, five touchdowns. Uh, Another 12, one. 12, close to 12 and a half yards per catch. Incredible. Hayden under center this time. I formation, Xander and Flaherty. Gets it, fakes a hand off to Flaherty, rolls to his right, has some room, throws it into the end zone, touchdown, oh. Talon Linder, second one of the night. Yeah, nice what, catch. Yeah, great catch there by Talon Linder, too. Uh, you know, we, we've seen Talon show so much uh, so much flair in, in his wide receiver game over the last couple of years, and right there, just another big yeah. play. He went up to get that ball. Ball was a little high, but Talon, such an incredible athlete, he was able to uh, to go get that and bring it down to, uh, for the uh, for the six points, and now 27-0, Beachwood lead. Senior leadership yeah love to see that talent great catch bud colson lair out for the extra point 150 go i'm sorry 152 to go in the first quarter snap is back hold is down kick is up and it is good 152 to go 28 zip tigers clay hayden's third touchdown pass of the night two of them to talon lindner one to urban and a chase flaherty on a one yeah. yard run yeah <clears throat> again this is, you know, I kind of feel bad for Gallatin County because it's just, you know, they, they're not built to deal yeah. with this, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, but, but uh, you know, again, for Beachwood, the, the key to these games is, you know, you, you, you still play as sure. if it's Covenant Catholic. You still sure. play as if it's LCA. You do your you, you run your offense, yeah. you execute on defense, and you get better. Yeah. Uh, and right now they're doing exactly that. You know, they're not they're not they're not playing down or they're not taking the game off. Sure. Um, and now already seeing seeing some freshmen. Yeah, we've got Kingston, good to see. Kingston uh, Brockett in there. We've All right. got 
I believe that's Cole Hoskins. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can see some of these other young men over here. Getting some chance on special yeah. teams. That's great. Colson Lair's kicking off from zone 40. Too deep for Gallatin County. Kick again is down the left-hand side. A nice kick fielded inside the 10. Gallatin County receiver brings it out to the 20, 25, 30. Has some room and a nice tackle from behind yeah, there by Shuler. Ty Schuler. Third Ty Schuler. I mean, yeah, he just uh, he's shown himself to be a really nice special teams yeah. player uh, in the last couple of weeks. We called his name quite a bit. A lot of speed. He's a senior, so he knows what he's doing. So uh, another nice special teams player by Ty Schuler. Senior leadership is very important. It's going to be real important here in about four weeks once these playoffs yes, get going. Gallatin County comes out for their third possession, trailing 28 zip, 145 to go first quarter. They're in the wishbone, kind of a unique eye formation with one more to the side here. Haynes gets a snap, rolls to his right, looking, looking, getting a little pressure, dumps it out to Joe Roberts, and he'll be brought down immediately for about a four-yard loss, three-yard loss, call it inside the 30. Yeah, again, uh, an offense that, uh, you know, just not – you know, they can't throw the ball downfield really yeah. at all. You know, their, their quarterback, is he's a big kid. He's a strong runner. He's not a thrower. Uh, but, you know, again, when you're talking about rosters built this way, you have to find the best one. Uh, you know, so they don't throw the ball much. When they do, they don't complete it at a high percentage, uh, and they definitely can't throw it downfield. So you see a lot of dump passes. Yeah. You see a lot of screens, and that's going to be, again, hard to do against the Beachwood Tigers. Uphill battle here for the Wildcats, and again, in a second and 14 and a power eye. Haynes gets a snap. Hands it around on a little reverse out to uh, Chad Hahn. He's going to get some positive yards, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. Call it third and ten. Ball spotted on the Gallatin County 33. Yeah, nice, nice run there by Hahn. Hahn, a five foot ten, 205 pound senior back, uh, comes in 126 yards rushing on 14 carries. He does have a touchdown. Uh, he he is one of the main uh, receiving threats for this Gallatin County team with four receiving touchdowns. Third down and ten. Ball on their 33. Haynes in a shotgun. Two receivers to his right, two to his left. One back joins him in the backfield. Gets a snap, fumbles it, picks it back up. Got some pressure in his face and has to dump it off. Incomplete. It'll bring up a fourth down and ten. Yeah, nice, nice job rushing by, I believe that's Jordy Wagner, number yeah. 53 uh, from his linebacker spot. Getting a lot of guys in here now. Yeah. That's good to see. And that's, the, yeah. that's the way it should be. I mean, these, these – uh, you know, aside from, you know, wanting to make sure your your top guys execute and put mm -hmm. points on the board at a rapid rate, you also want to, you know, get them, yes. get everybody healthy, get some, get reps. some rest, yeah. and, and, and let these younger guys develop a little bit. Gallatin County punting, 18 seconds in the first quarter to go 28 zip Beachwood. The punt is off, almost, almost blocked again. again. Fryman's going to catch it at his own 32. He goes to his left, cuts back at the 40. He's going to be tough to bring down here. All kinds of blockers. Big block yeah. comes out to the 50, 45 of 40. Makes a man miss at the 35 inside the 30. Man, that was a great move at about the 40. Fryman takes it all the way down to about the 32 of Gallatin. Yeah, about a about a 30, 32 yard return there Not by bad. Fryman, who he's just uh, you give him a full head of steam, and uh, he's going to be tough to bring down. Freshman. And, yeah, but also yeah, unbelievable. He really is. Um, you know, I was uh, I was looking at the the state leaders and uh, in terms of stats, and uh, you know, it really is impressive. Essentially, just you know, you look at you know what the Tigers' receiving core has accomplished right now. It is amazing. Uh, you know, Urban, Urban and Fryman are essentially the tenth and eleventh receivers That's overall incredible. in stats by wide receivers across the state. Um, they've just been so so good. Hayden comes out of the shotgun, joined by Flaherty. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Fakes the hand off the Flaherty. Wide open. Luke Got Sleet. a lot of room here. Throws it over yep, the wide open. Over on the right to Luke Sleet. Nice catch. First down. Going to be real close to a first down. See what they give him. They will give it to him at about the Gallatin County 21. First and 10 Tigers. Yeah, senior tight end Luke Sleet. Uh, you yeah. know, one of the uh, one of the young men uh, who uh, you know hasn't gotten a lot of playing time the last couple of years, but has worked his tail off to. Uh, to turn himself into a, a you know a, a weapon for this team and and, and has a really nice uh, nice ability to catch the ball from his tight end spot especially on crossing patterns which yeah. you saw right there yeah. he was lined up at left tight end and he just did a drag across the middle and he was wide up and Clay saw it and uh, threw a nice pass over it's uh, it's the fourth pass he's caught this year nice. so uh, on the season he's got four catches for 88 yards. End of the first quarter, Beachwood 28, Gallatin County nothing. Coach Gray down there, I see you. I want to just say, I think that Fryman kid might be able to play center field. Yeah, maybe. Maybe? Okay. I, I heard he's pretty good at baseball, too. So, yeah, yeah. 
Well, we got to get you in here, Coach, and tell us about how, how it's going tonight on this beautiful Friday evening. Man, what a night. Yeah, not so, bad, not, huh? So, how about that Fryman kid, man? Yeah, he's tell good, us, huh? Tell us, hey, about, tell us about him. Hey, <laughs> he's okay. I mean, he's all right. He's, he's, he's a decent baseball player. He's, he's okay in football. You know, he's all right. Unbelievable yeah, center is. fielder, really man. Is. Hayden again in the shotgun. That is not Hayden. That is a wildcat. It's, going, it's Urban. He takes a direct snap down inside the 20. The flag comes down. Luke is still running. He's going to Tech change ball. directions and probably get a touchdown. But let's see what this flag is. They threw a flag at about the 18. See what that, that call is. I mean, that just shows you yeah. that play right there just shows you what ridiculous speed he's got yes. to get across the field that quickly, and no one got near him. Yeah. I mean, Luke but, is But fantastic. it is coming yeah. back. Officials calling a timeout here. Injured player down for Gallatin County. Hope he's all right down about the 10-yard line. Haven't made the call yet, but I believe we're going to get a hold at about the 18-yard line. That'll take it back to the 28. It'll be first and 20 for Beachwood, or so, about first and 18. So, Luke, on, on the season, uh, you know, he's got – he came in with uh, 628 yards of total offense, eight touchdowns, now nine, uh, and, you know, close to about 650. Um, you know, you just extrapolate that over over what this season is is likely going to look like, oh, and yeah. then you look at uh, you know going into a senior year. I mean, think about the numbers he's going to wow. put up. I mean, yeah. that's you know just a, a tremendous tremendous athlete. <coughs> Injured player down for Gallatin County. Can't see who that is. Hopefully, it's just a cramp. I don't know if that's 68 or 58. I think it's 50. 50? I think. That would be Ethan Rayborn, if you're correct, sir. And, and man, he's getting up. That's good to see. And uh, he's going to come off under his own power. They still haven't called it yet. They called a injury timeout here. Think that we're going to get a hold on Beachwood. I will reset things for you. 28 Zip Tigers, 11.47 to go in the second quarter. Second quarter just getting underway. Three touchdown passes by Clay Hayden, one to Luke Erdman, two to Talon Lindner, and a one-yard touchdown run by Chase Flaherty gets us to where we are. So, Coach, tell us about what, you know, the, the uh, uh, in high school sports, you know, you come across these kids every once in a while. Mitchell Berger is one. Logan Castleman, John Oden, yeah. these kids that just have that it factor, that 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 DNA part of them that makes them just superstars that just they, they, they can do it all. We're starting to see that in Tyler Fryman. Talk about what gives him that ability. Just talk about him overall. Well, he's just – he works his butt off. You yeah. know, he really does in, in both sports. Yeah. And he plays basketball too. Um, but it's just, like you said, they got that it thing and they got that – that drive to be the best, yeah, you know, yeah. and and when your best players are your hardest workers, you're going to be successful. Because everyone you know? else just kind of follows the lead, yep. yeah. So last year, uh, during the uh, you know as your season went along, we, you know, right around uh, mid season, we started to see more of Tyler Fryman in the starting lineup, and then it just seemed like once he got that chance, he just took it and ran, and it just got be got better each week. It just seemed that his star seemed to go go higher. Talk about his contributions to your team last year. Oh, it was it was. You you know, it, everybody keeps asking me what we're going to be like this year, and I'm like, well, we got to have some young guys step up, you know, just like Tyler did. Tyler got an opportunity to yeah. go in, and, you know, he uh, he never did anything for us to take him out of the lineup. So yeah. when you get an opportunity, you take advantage of it like Tyler did. And, you know, we don't win a reason without Tyler Fryman. We don't yep. go to Lexington without Tyler Fryman, yep. and, even though he's an eighth grader, you yeah. know. No and doubt. The word was going around when, when we were playing an eighth grader that all oh, Beastwood must be not very good mm -hmm. because, you know, they're playing an eighth grader or playing for the future. But it wasn't that. It was, you know, he, he, he produced. Yeah. And, and now he already has a verbal offer to go to U of L. Is that correct? Now, yes. it isn't in writing yet, I understand, but yeah. he does have a verbal right. offer. Yeah. They offer Four they, year ride at U of L. Right. Yeah, verbal. For baseball. You can't Man. commit, yeah. fully commit, yeah. you know, sign or whatever until I think it's junior year. But. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, um, you know, and he knows, you know, I talked to him when, you know, the verbal, and I talked, you know, his dad, Troy, and, and he's, he knows. Yeah. It, you know, that's a that's a top ten, sure. if not and top five program. And they know what they're program. doing. They're oh, yeah. doing. They don't just throw those offers out to anybody. Yeah, oh, yeah. They throw those out to, they throw those out to try to beat other schools to 
to him. I mean, yeah. they really they, they identify those eighth, those younger kids when they get those offers. It's because they think they're going to be legitimate Division One stars. Right. Speaking of Tyler Fryman, he's in the Wildcat. He gets the ball, hands it off to Urban. Urban goes around the right side at the 30-20. Goodbye. No chance. Unbelievable. Four, three, two, Unbelievable. one touchdown. I just said it. I mean, the speed of Luke yeah. Urban. I mean, it just gives you the ability to do so much and to and to and to yeah. be successful at that. I mean, there are. I, I honestly don't think that there are any faster players in northern Kentucky. I yeah. mean, that was ridiculous. He split the Gallatin County, Gallatin County defenders at the second level, and there was no one there. I a mean, state a, track champion in yeah. 110 meters, man, and you, you see why now. Colson Lair out for the extra point, 34 nothing Beachwood, 11.09 to go, first half, second quarter. Snap is down, kick is up. Colson's kick is good. Second quarter of game number six, and Luke Urban has ten touchdowns on the season. Wow. Two rushing, eight wow. receiving. You guys just saw why he gave up baseball for track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. though. I mean, he's yeah. unbelievable in track. And, yeah. You know. You need to get him back and just, you know, pinch run Right, him, <laughs> right, right. I'm going to talk to him about that. <laughs> That's awesome. So you're, uh, you're starting practice yet or just weights? We're doing, doing weights and we're doing yeah. weights and we're doing uh, condition uh, agility stuff like that. Okay. Now, once soccer ends, then we get into like baseball, but we won't throw a baseball till January, so we, okay. we rest our arms for a while. But Good. they'll still field balls, drop them in the bucket. They'll yeah. work on flips and Good. you know base running and. You know, all that good stuff. All of these sports, you know what? They're year-round now, yeah, man, aren't they? Yeah, Everyone. Yeah. But that's good. Colson Lair is out for the kickoff, leading 35 to nothing. 11 minutes and 29 seconds, I believe, our score clock's going out a bit. Colson Lair has been fantastic, has missed one extra point all season that doinked off of the craw off of the upright and still almost went in. <laughs> yeah. Three of three of field goals. I mean, Incredible. he's just been amazing. Sophomore. Guy, guys, Luke Erdman, uh, June 1st, 2023, University of Kentucky State 1A class st uh, state championship meet for track. 100-yard meter dash. Luke Erdman, second place, 11.12. Wow. 11.12. Yeah. I could drive a cart that fast, Coach. <laughs> <That's>, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but maybe. I, you know, but he combines that speed with that toughness, too. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. like, a lot of times, especially in high school football, you get a kid that can fly like that doesn't have that toughness. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, have the yeah. ability. He gets it naturally. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. From, his, from his dad and, and uh, all his brothers. I'm sure no he got, he got brothers, whooped when yeah. he was young. Yeah. <laughs> First, uh, it was a five-yard penalty caught on Beachwood, and well, uh, re-kick it here. Well, there's no doubt DNA is an amazing thing. comes from a, uh, a long line of really good football players, too. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He's been playing football for a long time, and he's been playing it uh, with – a high IQ. He's been a teammate of Chase Flaherty now for about yeah. 12 yeah. years. This guy's yeah. been playing together. The kickoff is fielded inside the 30 by Gallatin, and he's going to bring it up out to about the 35, met by a host of Tigers. First down, Gallatin County. They need something here. They have not had a first down yet. Yeah, it, you know, I think that they're uh, right now on the sidelines. They're hoping that Beachwood puts their second team in so they <laughs> can get a little bit of, uh, you know, look, get a little bit of air to breathe, um, you know. And I, as you can see, you can start to see some second stringers coming in. Uh, it looks like Austin Flesh is in at left corner. He's uh, played a great like, special teams this year too, hasn't he? And I think Aiden Dickey's in at middle linebacker. Yeah. Brody Auer at left outside linebacker. Uh, so good job by uh, Coach Volker and his staff to get these uh, these young Tigers in. Anthony Haynes comes out for the shotgun. Three receivers to his right. Gallatin's going to call a timeout because they only had 10 guys on the field. Can't play with 10 men, so we're going to have a quick timeout here. Stay right here with you. 11 minutes and 30 seconds ago in the first half. Beachwood 35, Gallatin County nothing. Also, uh, just a uh, milestone was hit in the uh, – uh, I believe in the first quarter, Chase Flaherty uh, eclipsed the thousand yards for his career. Nice, um, you know, and, and tip of the cap to that young man. What a what a great and great running back he's been for the last two seasons. Cannot uh, stress it enough. When Berger gets hurt against Lloyd, <laughs> we all thought, oh, it was like a yep. dagger in the heart. And yep. Chase Absolutely was. stepped up. Absolutely. Without yeah. him, we're not state champions. Nope. We, and he broke his leg in the final. Yeah, yeah. When they were keying on him, yeah, knows all about <laughs> that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His numbers last year: 111 carries, 768 yards wow. rushing, and 19 touchdowns. Huge. And the, major the majority of that was in the final six games of yeah. the season. Yeah, um, you know, when so, we needed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, just uh, one of the unsung heroes of the state championship run last year. First and ten, Gallatin County ball on their own 34. 
Maddox. They've got some uphill sledding here to do. So you got Maddox, Kelly, Brody Waddell, and Jordy Wagner, the, the three-man defensive front. Tyson Hurry in an outside linebacker. He drops back to a defensive end. Haynes in the shotgun, hands it off to Roberts Ooh. coming through, and he is met hard. Going to get right back to the line of scrimmage, second and ten. Stuck, and I believe Ooh, that was – I believe that was uh, Brody Ayler, perhaps. Wow. 20, uh, yeah. Brody, uh, Brody Ayler and Aiden Dickey teamed up for the uh, for the hit there. Uh, those two young men, remember those names, yeah. Brody Ayler. We know that name, but we don't know Brody. Uh, at least those of you that watching that might not uh, be aware of the uh, the uh, middle school and and uh, NKYFL career of Brody Ayler. He is like Landon, his older brother, yeah. one heck of a tough nosed football player that can get it done. Aiden Dickey also emerging as a really, really top sophomore for this Tiger squad. Second and 10, Gallatin, Haynes in a shotgun, two receivers to either side. He gets a snap, rolls through right under heavy pressure, incomplete pass, was trying to throw a quick hitter out there to Joe Roberts, falls incomplete. Yeah, pr a pressure from uh, from the left and right side, and, uh, you know, the uh, – they were just lucky to get that one off there. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, again, tough sledding. They're, they're really, uh, you know, they're, they're approaching running clock status. We could be out here pretty quick tonight, guys. 10.37 to go. First half, Beach with 35. Gallatin counting nothing. Gallatin coming out for a third down and 10. Ball on their own 33. Gallatin has not had a first down tonight. See if they can get one here. Haynes in a shotgun. Again, two receivers to either side. One back joins him in the backfield. That's Roberts. Drops back to pass, flicks it out to Roberts on the right side, but he'll be met quickly by a couple of Tigers. Gets about a maybe back to the scrimmage again. It'll be fourth and ten. Yeah, the, the uh, coming into the season or coming into tonight, uh, Anthony Haynes had only completed 19 passes in in the four games, uh, and, and that was in 40 attempts. So he's completing under 50 percent. And you know, again, a lot of his completions, a lot of those 19 are to his running backs out of the backfield on those little dump passes. Yeah. Which again works against your your lower tier teams. It's not going to work against the speed of this uh, Tiger squad. Pick your poison here, Coach. Who would you kick it to, Urban or <laughs> Fryman? <laughs> oh, I think I'd kick it out of bounds. <laughs> There's another bad Might be snap. an idea. High snap, <laughs> almost blocked. Looks like Fryman's going to get a turn, but the ball bounces at the 40. He's not going to be able to get it. Rolls inside the Beachwood 35 at about the 31. That was smart of Fryman just to get out of the way there. Well, that was a great job by Joe Roberts, the yeah. punter for Gallatin County. He caught that snap that was high into his right but with one hand, brought it in and got off a pretty nice kick. Yeah. Uh, so a bright spot. Uh, you can tell Joe Roberts is a nice, nice player, senior running back. Uh, you know, kind of like uh, Chase Flaherty type for Gallatin County. Clay Hayden coming out to lead the offense again. He'll probably play most of the first half, if not the entire first half. Looks like a lot of the starters are still in all on offense. 9.42 to go first half, Beach with 35, Gallatin County nothing. Clay comes out in the shotgun again with Chase Flaherty joining him in the backfield, one receiver to either side. Clay gets a snap, fakes a handoff to Chase, rolls to his right, throwing deep wide downfield, open. has a wide Could open three? Talon Could Linder, three? Oh. and he tripped the turf monster, yeah. got him at the 30, <laughs> but it was a great catch just to spin around and get it. Nice catch inside the Gallatin County 30. Yeah, about a 38-yard pickup there from uh, Clay Hayden to Talon Linder, who uh, is having himself a game tonight. Actually, it looks like yes, it's going to be a 40-yard pickup. Nice. Um, and that, so, you know, it, it, had he not been turned around a little bit by that one and hung up a little bit, yeah. that would have been his, uh, his another touchdown for Talon. Clay threw that about 40 yards on the run. It, yeah. Man, it, I he, mean. he makes throws that, you know, college guys should do. Yep. He makes them look so easy, rolling out to his right or left. He's incredible. Hayden again in the shotgun, three receivers to his left, two to his right. Gets a snap, has some time, looks right, then quick throw left back over to Fryman, who catches the ball at about the 25, makes a man miss, got a guy hanging on his jersey, going to carry him. Inside the 15, <laughs> real yeah, close I mean, to another first down. Yeah, again, it's just it's that it's that that toughness and that that uh, refusal to go down uh, that these these receivers have. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it we've seen it tonight from from you know the top four receivers. Um, they just they do they right now they're just doing it all. They catch the ball, they can they can run, uh, and they can fight. Man, and that's a heck of a combo. No doubt about it. Clay Hayden getting the call over from Greg Hergett. Comes back out. Clock is running. 8.36 to go in the first half. 35 zip Tigers. Tigers come out for a first and 10. Ball spotted on the 16-yard line at Gallatin County. Hayden again in the shotgun. Three receivers to his right, two to his left. Chase Flaherty in the left slot. Hayden looks to his right, throws to his right over the cross on a quick post. Again, that's Fryman, catches it the five, spins Look inside the five, trying to Look get in this. there. In there. They're going to push him right oh, into it. Oh, he got, no, he didn't get in. Real close. close down about to one. Now, last week, 
apparently on a snapped play, Coach, you cannot push a quarterback trying to score. Beachwood sideline swore that the Covcath quarterback was pushed as he's going in. Now, on that play, you're allowed to push a guy. If he catches the ball, you can't do it from a snap. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. a Kentucky rule. So, yeah. Uh, on that play, great blitz pickup by left guard Nick Alexander yes. on a blitzing linebacker that was coming coming with some serious heat. That allowed the, uh, the pass to be completed. Fryman in the Wildcat now with Flaherty joining him in the backfield. Fryman gets a snap, fakes it, Clarity going to go right on the right side, touchdown. Not touched. Uh, that's as easy as it gets. Yeah. We could have driven all three of our cars through the right, right side of the right. offensive line right there. Yeah. Just a great job blocking by, by the right side of the offensive line. Uh, you know, and, and again, Fryman just, uh, he's got that that uh, that it factor that finds the end zone. You give him the ball, he's going to do everything he can to get in there. Bryson Lair out for the extra point, seven. 39 to go, first half, 41 nothing. Tigers ready for the extra point. That's Fryman's ninth touchdown wow. of the year, his fourth rushing, and he's got five receiving. Unbelievable. Oh, high snap, but it got down. Nice job to wow. get that snap down, and the extra point is good. Yeah. Fantastic job by Sean Souter. Sean Souter, just a great holder. And, again, all these little pieces, yeah. you know, that, that might look little, uh, you know, to, to the untrained eye. You know, you have to have – if you're going to have a team that's going to compete for a state title or, or at least, you know, hopefully make a run, yeah. you got to have great special teams. A yep. part of great special teams, you got to have a great holder. And Sean Souter has done a great job this yes, year. Yes, he has. Holding, you know, I very rarely do the snaps go awry, but when they – do he seems he seems to bring them down perfectly every time yeah real nice job by sound sean there how to get the extra point down beachwood 42 gallatin county nothing first half still running clock will be starting bryson lair out for the kickoff again all these underclassmen two guys you know who are playing you know bryson lair tyler fryman urban all these young guys getting a i mean a great run it's going to be a fun year the end of this and next for sure Bryson Lair for the kick. Two Gallatin County receivers deep inside their own five. Good deep kick by Bryson. Going to be fielded at about the 11 by Gallatin County. Comes out to his 20. Cuts back to his left. Has a little bit of room. Joe Roberts going to be brought down at about the 25. First and 10, Gallatin. And it looks like uh, Aiden Dickey on the uh, tackle along with number 71. 71. I'm not sure who's 71. Seven. Colin and Colin Morris. Colin, all right. Nice. Yeah. Sean Souter coming in. Got to play safety now, too. Talon Linder playing safety as well. Gallander County coming out, needing a first down here. You got to take a small victory, coach. A first down here would yes, be good for do. them. They're just out, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, you know the, the, the question that you have to ask, especially, you know, you look like another matchup tonight similar to this is Covenant mm -hmm. Catholic uh, taking on Holmes. Yo, you that know, was, Holmes yeah. 40 to nothing and half. Yeah, oh, Holmes 0-5 wow. and, and just like very light on numbers this year. Yeah. You know, it, it's there's a lot of districts across the state like this right now. Haynes under center. He goes on the keeper to the left. Going to get some positive yards here. In fact, about the best play Gallatin's had all night. Going to pick up about seven yards, take it outside the 30 to about the 33, bring up a second and three here. For Gallatin. Clock is running, 6.20 to go, 42 zip Tigers, first half. Thanks for tuning in. We'll bring you all these games on YouTube at home. Once we go on the road, they'll be on audio, and then come playoff time, audio only. KHSAA does not allow YouTube broadcast. So there's that. playoffs? Yep, can't do really? it for playoffs. Haynes gets a snap, hands it off. This might be their first for now. Not quite. Going to be real yeah, close. About a yard short. Going to be about a yard short. Third and, a third and one here for Gallatin. They're in no hurry. 548, first half, clock running. Guys, not sure if you saw last week, Lexington Catholic, uh, who now holds the number one, or Lexington Christian holds uh, uh, the number one spot in the Kentucky media poll, but not in the RPI. In the RPI, they're sitting at number two. Uh, but last week, they defeated Le uh, Lexington Catholic 49-42. Yeah, yeah. uh, we'll talk wow. about the uh, unbelievable numbers of Brady Hensley in that game here in a second. Third and one, Gallatin. Haynes on a keeper. Might have their got first it. first down. It. He got does. It. The ball's going to be spotted about the Gallatin County 37. So LCA senior running back, uh, transfer from Madison Central, Brady Hensley last week, uh, 39 carries, 248 yards, and five wow. touchdowns. 
Uh, Cutter Bowley, 18 to 23 passing, 224 yards, no touchdowns. I mean, why why would you throw the ball yeah, that much right. and give it to Hensley? But he did run for two touchdowns. Uh, so a big win last week. But again, notice that number, Lyson Catholic, 42 points. Haynes again hands it to the fullback coming through. He's got a nice hold, takes it outside for another first down out at about the Gallatin County 49. Yeah, Dawson Schluter with the uh, with the nice carry there. <clears throat> so the question is, is, is you know, can can LCA's defense, you know, which is which has hurt them in the last couple yep. of years, can they tighten that up to to hopefully hold off for them, Owensboro Catholic and Peachwood and Mayfield. The way it stands now, we would see our good friends from LCA in the state semifinals down there, the way it stands now That's in the RPI. Fun. We'll see what happens, though. Gavin County comes out with their second first down of the ball on their own 49-yard line. Haynes again takes under center in the wishbone formation. Old Oklahoma Sooners here hands it off to the tailback. Going to take it inside Beachwood territory down about the 48. Yeah, Picks up about three. Yeah, the 46, uh, 46 blast right there, yeah. and uh, not not much movement there for uh, for Gallatin County again. Uh, starting to see some uh, some young Tigers in uh, number sixty six freshman Kyle Shaw. Uh, let's see, no, uh, that's, all right now. Oh, that's all right now. Okay, nice and to see Kyle get in there. Freshman getting some good action here. Second down and seven for Gallatin. They're the first time they have been in Beachwood territory all night. Back in the wishbone, Haynes is going to go under center. Well, there's kind of an offset eye this time. Haynes gets a snap, fakes a handoff to the first man through, gives it to the second man through, who's going to get right nice back play. to the line of scrimmage. 66. Yeah, Kyle good tackle. Shaw. Yeah, Kyle Shaw nice. on, the, on the tackle. Young Kyle Shaw, who's had, had a tremendous freshman season. Uh, you know, the freshman team, uh, which knocked off Dixie last night, 30 to 26. Yeah, heard that was a heck a of a lot, game. A lot of talent on that, on that freshman team that will be uh, – uh, some of those young men will be contributors next year for this uh, for this Beachwood team, which should be absolutely loaded. But Kyle Shaw, a big part of that of that freshman team. Third down and six for Gallatin now. Ball spotted on the Beachwood 46. Clock is still running. 2:48 to go. 42 to nothing. Tigers. Thanks for tuning in. Haynes under center. I formation. He gives it to the fullback who. Gets by the first man, but a host of Tigers are going to bring him down after about a two-yard game, bringing up about a fourth down and three here for Gallatin. And they was, will go for this. That was Frank Cervantes on the carry, his first carry of the night for Gallatin County. <clears throat> now, taking a look at the uh, at the uh, you know other action last week in in, in Class Two A, so. Uh, well, LCA is taking on Shawnee tonight. Shawnee, not a very good team at yeah. all. Two and three, number 24 in the 2A RPI. Fourth down and three, ball spotted on the Beachwood 44. Haynes in the shotgun. Receiver comes in motion. Haynes is going to keep it and get real close to a first down. In fact, that last yep. push might get it for him down at the Beachwood 40. Yeah, and they're doing, you know, they, they, they uh, Coach Browning and his coaching staff, they know that Beachwood's starting to, uh, to flow in some, uh, second stringers, third stringers. So they're going to, you know, when you see that, you know, obviously that, that means you're probably going to be a little bit more vulnerable up the middle. So they're just uh, pounding it right up the middle on that last play. Clock is running, 1.30 to go first half. Haynes again in the offset eye, rolls out to his right now, throws underneath. Ooh, Ooh and he is met hard. That's Joe Roberts tackled hard out there by Austin Fleisch. Good tackle. And that's Austin Flesh on that big stick right there. Uh, big, big play. Austin Flesh, a, uh, another name to watch. Big, strong, athletic corner. Uh, he will be a very big part of this team this year and next. He was, he's been playing great all season on yep. special teams. Sure yep. has. Give him a second loss of about six on that. Second down and 16. Ball spotted all the way back to the Beachwood 46. Haynes in the shotgun. One receiver joins him in the backfield. He gets a snap. Got some pressure coming to his right. Throws underneath yeah. intended for Bryson Straub. Incomplete. Yeah, and, uh, and and Coach Volker and his crew say, you know what? If you're gonna if you're gonna attack up the middle against our young guys, we're gonna throw some uh, exotic blitzes at you. And right there, just a little twist off the left side. T Tyson Hurry at left defensive end. He goes hard inside. Jordy Wagner at defensive tackle. He twists around and almost brings down uh, brings down the uh, quarterback for Gallatin County and causes the incompletion. Third and sixteen now. 
Haynes in a shotgun, looks at his wrist for the play. Bli Ooh. Beachwood showing blitz yeah. up the middle. We're going to get start. a five-yard penalty there. You were a blitzer, Coach Gray, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Coach, tell us about your football coaching experience. Football coaching experience? Yes. Uh, of none. None? Oh, none. okay. I no. thought you could know. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. no. This is the one sport I, I haven't really uh, okay. ever done. I, yeah. I love it. I yeah. love Friday nights. Oh, yeah. I love watching no it doubt. on TV, but I don't know anything. Well, tell us, tell us about your basketball coaching experience because I know you got yeah. you quite yeah. a bit there. Tell yeah. us, tell us about your run as a uh, uh, basketball coach. You haven't I, thrown any chairs or anything, have you? You chuck a chair out on the no, court? No, I never <laughs> threw one. I punched a couple, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, I coached it. I used to coach at. Uh, well, I was at Brossard for yeah. a year or two, oh, yeah. and then I was at Scott with Brad Carr. That's right. Um, okay. And uh, loved it. Loved it. I just, once I started doing baseball, it was just, you know, I was at, at Ludlow with Randy Wooford. And, yeah. You know, but going yeah, from basketball to baseball was just too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just way too much. I was exhausted. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I had a blast. I loved basketball. I loved everything about it. I loved scouting and all that good stuff. What's, but what's, that's, what's the, uh, your favorite memory coaching basketball, like the best game you ever coached in? Sure. <laughs> Man, we had some really good teams at Scott. Yes, you did. But there was Darius Miller. Yep. There was a um, oh, kid from Clark County that went okay. to Tennessee. Yep. 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 I can't think of his name right now. But um, third and eleven, Gallatin hands in a shotgun, gets it to snap, looks to his. They, he's going to throw wow, deep down the go. middle. Talon yep. Linder's going to get an interception to go with his two touchdowns. He's going to bring it back out to about the fourteen. Talon playing center field out there and just great play. Well, and you can't fault Tim Browning, uh, you know, for, for taking a shot downfield. I mean, everything else is, uh, you know, just not going real well. So you might as well see, you know, what your what your senior quarterback, uh, Anthony Haynes, can do there. But, again, that's just not his not not his game. Not his game, and uh, that will do it for the first half. Mark Talley, 42 to nothing. Beachwood leads Gowton County here at Beachwood High School. Guys, that's about Mercy. what I expected. Right. Mercy that's about what rule. I expected. Yeah. And again, I, you have to, you have to, you know, a, a lot of times. Remember, these are high school kids. You never, yeah. you know, sometimes you, you as in coach, I'm sure you can talk to this at nauseum. You, you know, one of the things you have to do is make sure that when you take a really talented team that's that's hitting on all cylinders, you take them against a lesser opponent that they don't play down to their opponent yeah. and they don't take the night right. off. Yep. Um, so this is exactly what Jay Volker and his his staff wanted to see. I'd imagine just sure. getting the ball into the end zone. Uh, executing defensively and not letting anything silly happen in terms of I'm sure Gallen Jay County's was thinking attack. let's let's get the running clock yeah. and let's yeah. keep healthy yeah. which, no, they no did, yeah. which they did which they did because these are the games man that yeah. sometimes you get guys that you know they they get hurt and you know but they did they did their job that's for sure now did you coach at Scott with uh, Schneider and all of them Blake Schneider or were you prior to that Blake no Blake was there Blake was yeah. there I thought, yeah, I thought so yeah yep. they had some yep. good teams back yeah. then with them yep. yeah. So were you on the sta you weren't on the staff for the Jake Omer? No, no, that no, was that Coach Fromer. Yeah, for, okay. I was already okay, gone. Then. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. It was uh, that was that was another time yeah. where Coach Fro's team went down there. That was that was pretty cool. We yeah, went down there awesome. and watched it all. That was a, that was a great run. That by Sweet that Sixteen Eagles has squad. to be a cool experience, man. Just uh, to get down there. I'm and, sure. Yeah. Man, Mark, have you never be been there? No, I've never been oh, to Sweet man, Sixteen. Man, you yeah. got it. You, oh, that's, that's, as a, as a fan, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I've never been down. there as a coach. But okay. No. Yeah, we we got close at Scott. We just like I said, we had really good teams, but we had Darius Miller and yeah. Preston Knowles. That's the kid. Oh, that okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then I can't remember the kid that went to Tennessee. There was another. Um, he was leading. I know who you're talking about. I can't remember his name. Well, everyone, th uh, we'll take a quick break here in yeah, a few minutes it. and then uh, come back here with the second half. The Beachwood Band is going to play. We'll take a break here. Can't play music on YouTube, folks. I'm sorry. It's a copyright infringement, these d rules right, they throw right, out right. at us. But uh, for everyone on YouTube can see the band play and hopefully hear it as well. And uh, we'll take a quick break. Kevin, come back for some second half action. Yes, sir. Awesome. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We're at halftime. Beachwood 42, Gallatin County Zip. Thanks for tuning in right back after this. Go Tigers. Yes, sir.
two-time KMEA state champions and two-time Bands of American national champions. Last week in the Marching Tigers were named grand champions at the Lafayette Invitational in Lexington, Kentucky. The Marching Tigers 2023 program is entitled Escapades.
the second one to Talon Lender. That's correct. Three on the night. Yes. And then the other uh, three touchdowns are Chase Flaherty, one-yard run, Luke Erdman, 31-yard run, and a Tyler Fryman, two-yard run. Wow, everyone's getting involved in this offense tonight. Now, Coach Gray, I hear a rumor that there's an ex-Tiger pitching tomorrow down in Richmond, Kentucky in the inter-squad game. Yes, sir. Wow. Uh, they have an inter-squad game at noon. Yep. Uh, and Mitchell's throwing one inning down there. Um, nice. I talked to Brandon. Him and Kerry are going down. I was going to go down, but I got a funeral to go to tomorrow. So. Okay. But uh, How's yeah, he looking? Throwing in the 90s, mid-90s? 90, 92 to 94 he was. Great. Yeah. So, that is yeah, great to it's going to be awesome. To I can't wait to hear how he does. Well, I mean, that has to, it, you know, it just says a lot about his work ethic and his uh, his drive to, to succeed. I mean, to, to be able to be where he's at right now, it's pretty impressive considering, you know, the – you know, considering the injury and, and uh, you know, the amount of work it takes to get, you know, to, to this point. So right. you got to tip your cap to him. That Absolutely. injury was only about a year ago. Think about that. One yeah. year ago, almost tonight, he yeah. got hurt against Lloyd. Be honest with you, Mark, I really don't want to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> – I hear you. I hear you, yeah. sir. That, that was that was a rough No, it's just so awesome to see yeah, him back on the bump. It is. It know? is. Uh, just taking a look at some other scores across uh, yeah. Northern Kentucky and downstate. Uh, Lloyd leads Brosser 26 to 8 at halftime. That Lloyd team. Yeah, they're Newport. having a great year. They're beating Newport. I'm sorry, yeah, New beating yeah. Newport. Yeah, that Lloyd team is uh, is really good. It's going to be interesting to see what they can get done in 3A yeah. uh, this year. Licensing Christian uh, defeating Shawnee 42 0 uh, in the second quarter. Running clock there. Yeah. Uh, Raceland, number one in single A uh, football. They are Molly whipping Newport Central Catholic 20 to nothing. Uh, Highlands defeating Cooper 27 to 17. Mm. Uh, that game, I believe, in the third quarter. Covenant Catholic uh, leading uh, 61 to nothing over Holmes. Uh, Dixie leading 53 to nothing over Boone County. Yeah. Simon Kenton leading uh, 36 to seven over Dunbar. Now, Mark Talley explained to us the uh, why it's a good thing that Cuffcat, Dixie, and Simon Kenton are winning tonight in their games pretty easily. Well, I'm in the third week of my RPI class over to NKU, <laughs> and, and I'm getting a pretty good grade so far. But it, it, so it all depends. If you beat a team that's in a higher class and they continue to win, it helps us. Yes. And that's the very uh, – what simple version of that explained. Yeah. It, it helps us to have teams who we beat in higher classes win throughout the year. Next week's game is a opening kickoff or a second quarter kickoff, second half kickoff, fielded by Allen and taken out to about the 20-yard line. Interesting game, guys, a week from tonight. Dixie and Highlands. We need Dixie to win that game. If yeah. Dixie wins that game, that helps us in the RPI yeah. big time. I tell you, the high ones is playing at such they a high are. level they right are. now. I, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure I would, I would pick Dixie in that one. Uh, but you know, Dixie has shown they've shown moments. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be a big one for yeah, us. Yeah, they played Cuffcat tight. You yeah. know, that was a close game oh, against yeah. Cuffcat. Yeah. Gallatin County comes out for their first possession here in the second half. We're going to have a running clock here. Beachwood up 42 to nothing. Gallatin County uh, quarterback Anthony Haynes back in. They picked up a couple of first downs at the end of the first half. That's been all about the offense here for Gallatin. Haynes again under center, hands it to the fullback coming through. He'll be met there quickly. There we go. There we go. Two, uh, two uh, up-and-coming players in the yeah. program, Chase McDaniel, left defensive end, Kyle Shaw at uh, defensive tackle. Uh, the freshman playing a lot of minutes tonight. Good. Uh, but uh, two, as I said, two uh, young men that are emerging as possible uh, possible weapons for the uh, for next year yeah. for this team. Chase McDaniel, first time playing football uh, in a while, left defensive end, very fast, very athletic young man. Uh, and Kyle Shaw, just a really – he's a he's a, he's a a trench grinder. Yes, he, he is. He's a young man, that play, a two-way lineman that can just flat out play. He's been playing for a long time at a high level, and he's a great, great get for this team. Second and 12, Gallatin, again in the I formation. And, then, boy, mm. the Haynes is met. He wanted to hand that off or fake the handoff. He got smacked for about a three-yard loss again. It's going to be about third down and 15, 16 maybe. Yeah, and that was uh, that was Chase McDaniel again nice. with the uh, – uh, with a nice play off that off his left defensive end spot again, very, uh, very new to uh, to this program, very new to football. I don't think he's pl ever played before, but uh, you can tell he's starting to figure things out. Yeah. Very athletic, and very quick off the edge. Third down and 16 for Gallatin, all the way back inside their own 20. Ball spot on the 18. Haynes in a shotgun. Uh, back joins him in the backfield. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. Haynes looks over at the coach. Quick change call play was changed here. Looks like a blitz coming from Beachwood. They do not. Haynes gets it, throws a screen out to his left, caught out there at, 
takes it out to about the 20. I believe that's Joe Roberts. He's going to get back to maybe a couple of yards of the loss. It'll be fourth down and about 13. Yeah, and I believe that was Cohen Henderson uh, at right corner with the tackle on the play there. Again, another nice job by uh, Chase McDaniel, who is just uh, he's just beating up the uh, right tackle that's trying to guard him. Um, McDaniel got into the backfield, caused the, uh, caused the quick pass. I'm surprised they were able to complete it, but they did. But Cohen Henderson and the uh, rest of the Tigers defense there to make sure no real damage done on the play. Interesting formation here. I think they're punting. They are. No one deep for the Tigers. Beachwood doesn't think they're going to punt. So no one's deep here for Beachwood. Oh, boy. Chase is... McDaniel. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, that's gonna there be he safety. is. Safety. Chase McDaniel. Tackled in the end zone. Again, the snap was low, Murph. And uh, Chase McDaniel chased him down. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, again, such a tough spot for Gallatin County on these special teams plays. And, and you know, they, they you know, when you have a, you know, a, a center that's pretty rattled, you can yeah. tell, you know, that one got away from him. And then you got somebody as quick as Chase McDaniel off the edge. That's what happens, 44 to nothing. In my RPI, uh, Coach Gray, I learned a safety counts as two points. Oh, is that, that right? That's so taught yeah. that, yeah. You so have that's to be two. a road scholar to figure out the RPI, don't you? <laughs> you do. I, it is so confusing. But I do know we need Dixie and Simon well, Canton to win right. out. Yep. And it, it, they probably won't, but the, we need them to win every game possible. Right. That'll look, help us. Looking at the schedules, I think, you know, Cuffcap didn't look like I don't think they're going to lose in, no, the, in their schedule they won't. that they have left. They'll win out probably too. But you're right, Dixie and Highlands, That's that we, would be a big one. We need Dixie to win that game. I think it's next week. I believe it's at Highlands, too, which is yeah. bad news, too. But yeah. we'll see. You never know. Nope. Gallatin County is going to have to free kick now. They'll free kick it from their own 20. You can punt it or you can put it on a tee. It's up to you. <laughs> see what they're going to do here. Beachwood is going to send a return team fact for this. I believe we have uh, – yeah, I think Fryman and Urban are done for the night. So that's mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it should be. We, yeah. Right now, it looks like Colton Craycraft, Peyton Schuler, and I can't see who is on the other side closest to the athletic building. But Colton Craycraft uh, on on uh, closest to us on this side, uh, a very talented freshman, one of the uh, an up and coming uh, player who has emerged as a serious offensive weapon for the freshman team this year. My goodness, and I the free have kick has popped up never straight, seen that before. caught by a Beachwood short man. There, That's a nice catch it right sure there. Was. Bring that in. Who's that? Let's see who that 22, is. Twenty-two. No, Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Cohen, yeah, Cohen Henderson there again with another nice play. Yeah. Uh, I, I, coach, coach. I don't think I've ever seen a kickoff go quite that high. <laughs> Me neither. That's uh, and that, normally that's the fair coach. catch them when yeah, they yeah. like that. Now, coach, can you tag from third on that? Could you? <laughs> <laughs> I probably would send them. <laughs> would send them. <laughs> All right, freshman quarterback Bo Souter in for the Tigers. All right. He's, He's going to have a nice year. Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of emerging stars in this program, Bo Souter, a terrific year as a freshman quarterback. Souter gets a snap, hands it back to the first man through, going to be taken down for about a two-yard loss down to about the Gallatin County 40. And uh, on that carry, that was Brody Ayler on the carry. Loss of two, second <coughs> down and 12. Yeah, Brody Ayler, uh, a, 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 uh, another tremendous yes. young player with the carry there. Uh, name to watch in terms of a, a player that could play a major role in this offense next season. Word on the street there, Coach Gray, is Brody plays baseball too, right? Or no? I, You know what? I, th I, don't, I don't remember if he tried out or if okay. his older I think brother. He was his older I, brother. Yeah, okay. I, th yeah I, think he, uh, I, th I think he dealt with some injuries that prevented him from playing the last couple of years. Beach winner shotgun quick pass out here to Ty Schuler. Ty picks up. Couple of yards, dragging tackles down about the Gallup County 30. Going to get a lot of that loss back, plus about seven more. It's going to be a, they call it third down and three. Uh, again, Shore, who we've uh, we've we've seen and talked about several times the last couple of weeks, a uh, really nice special teams player, uh, getting a, a getting a target and, a, and makes the catch there. So a nice play for a for a nice pickup to uh, get us on schedule to get a, pick up a first down. Clock running, 6:42, 44 zip Tigers, third quarter. We got sophomore or freshman quarterback Bo Souter in. In his shotgun, he gets a snap, hands it to the first man through, and he's going to get real close to the first down, see where they spot that. That carry was by number 22, Brody Ayler again. He's going to be just short. It'll be a fourth and about maybe a half yard. 
So on the freshman level right now, uh, you know, the top four teams uh, in no particular order are Beachwood, Highlands, Cuffcath, and Ryle. Um, and, and there's a pretty steep drop-off after that. Uh, and, and I think if you take a look at all four of those teams, uh, Bo Souter is by far the, the top quarterback of those wow. four teams. Um, each team's kind of got their strength, obviously, yeah. but Souter definitely the top the top quarterback in freshman football in Northern Kentucky this year. Souter on her center this time, two receivers to his right. He's going to hand it to the eye back, there and that's Ayler. And Ayler's uh -oh. gone, maybe, at the 20, 15. Thought he was going to get through there. Nice shot by Gallup to kind of to catch him. Takes it down about the 12 first down Tigers. Yeah, nice tackle there by number 51, Connor Reed, uh, senior linebacker for Gallatin County. If he wouldn't have brought Aor down, he would have went for six for sure. Thought he might go there. Again, Souter gets a play by, from Greg Herget here. Tigers leading 44 to nothing. We'll be back here next week and the week after. All Two right. more home games starting at 7.30. So four receivers on this play. Uh, Nate Paps in the slot, Colton Craycraft in the slot, and Patrick Weaver on the right side. Bo Souter gets a snap, looks to his left, quickly complete out there to number six, Ty Schuler. He's almost, almost going to get in. in. Takes it down about the two-yard line. Nice play by Ty Schuler. Yeah, and right there you can see what, you know, Bo Souter, tall, yeah. uh, tall, uh, athletic, got a really nice arm. Um, he's not somebody who panics in the pocket, yeah. and he's got a great, he's got a great arm. Um, and they're, they're running the offense they were in right now on the freshman level, and you can see he's just really, really capable. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's just had such a great year. I mean, my guess is he's probably got – I, I believe, I think he's probably gotten five games. He's probably got close to 13 touchdown passes. Wow. And, and a good just, name, too, Coach. That's Bo a good, strong name. Souter. Well, you look at him, look. He, he looks, he yeah. looks like yeah. a quarterback, you know. <laughs> Souter under center. He's going to hand it off again to the second man Easy. through, and it's going to get in, maybe. They, they got, they're not going to give it to him? Okay. No call short. yet. It's going to be spotted inside the one. It'll be second and goal here. The carry was by 22 for Beachwood. Brody Ayler almost got in there, but just short. Mark, you know what they say, Bo knows football. Yes, he does, man. <laughs> it looks like, you know, the future is bright here exactly. on 54 Beachwood Road. So we've got uh, at left tackle George Wilson, sophomore. All right. uh, uh, Jordy Wagner at left guard. Colin Morris at right, uh, or Colin Morris at center. And we'll get to the rest later. Souter again under center. Hands it off to the first man through, and he's going to get in. Right behind George Wilson, who I can tell you, George, he lives on our street. He cuts some grass now. He does a good job, man. He's an entrepreneur. He entrepreneur. is a great kid, George Wilson. Yeah, and I can't see who that I believe it was 25 who scored. I think it's Zach True, maybe, or no, I'm sorry. Parton, Nathan maybe? Nathan Parton. Nathan the Parton got yep. the touchdown. First varsity touchdown for Nathan Parton. And they're going to go for two here. But we're not going to kick any more extra points. It's 50 to nothing here, 345 to go, third quarter. Bo gets a snap, hands it to the first man through. Parton again. And they did that's get in, and that's probably just as well. Keep the score at 50 to zip here with 3.45 to go in the third quarter. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Next week we'll be right back here, 7.30, against the Walton Verona Bearcats. Yeah, who, are Walton they, who are they playing tonight? Well, that, I was just getting to that. Walton Verona struggling tonight against Bracken County. Ooh. So that kind of answers a couple of questions there. Uh, you know, as I said, uh, tonight coming in, District 5, uh, Beachwood number one, Carroll County number two, Walton Verona number three, Bra uh, Owen four, Bracken five, but – Early RPI, so a lot of a lot of movement will come in the next couple of weeks. A lot of people feel that Bracken County is the only real team that can that can compete with yeah. Beachwood this year, even minimally. And we play um, them down yeah. there too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, right now, Bracken defeating Walt Verona 14 to nothing. Um, you know, so it, it, that that does answer some questions uh, for yeah. those looking at district play and who who will be the top two. My guess is right now early. Uh, don't don't uh, tell me I told you so if I'm wrong, but I think it's going to be Beachwood 1, uh, Bracken County 2. Fair enough. Bryson Lair out for the uh, kickoff. Beachwood leading 50 to nothing, 345 to go third quarter. Been all Tigers yeah. tonight. Uh, the 11th man on the kickoff team comes running out. We're good to go. Jake Atmore in yeah. on kickoff freshman. Nathan Papps freshman. Colton Craycraft freshman. Kyle Shaw freshman. Good kick again by Colson Lair. Takes it all the way down to the five-yard line. Gallatin County back comes oh, out. Ball is out. Big hit. What a hit right there. That big hit ball came out. Gallatin County got it back. And uh, the, the players thought the ball was in the pile. It's not. The ref is holding it. Well, so uh, yeah. Gallatin County gets it first and 10 from their own 22. Well, much like his older brother, uh, you know, we talked so, similar situation in the, the Aylers, much yeah. like his brother Carson Craig, yes, who had just two spectacular years yes. uh, at corner for 
uh, for Noel Rash and the Beachwood Tigers in two state championship yes, uh, seasons. Uh, Colton Craycraft, freshman, is a tough as nails football player, and right there he that just he just he just lowered the boom <laughs> on that on that returner, and the ball popped out, and there was a little bit of a scrum for the ball. Gowton came away with it, but nice job by Colton Craycraft. That young man doesn't back down from anything or anyone. Nice to see that in there. Nice hit there by Craycraft. The ball is for, by the first and ten. Gallatin County's got it on their own 23-yard line, trailing 50 to nothing, 2.37, clock running, third quarter. All right, Peyton Moorhart in at nose tackle for the Tigers. Zach True in at left outside linebacker. Uh, Chase McDaniel still in at right defensive end. And I think those are, yeah, those are the only new ones in. Haynes under center, wishbone formation here for Gallatin. Hands it off to the Halfback coming through, going to get about five yards out, almost to beach with 30. They'll spot it at the 29 at Gallatin. Yeah, is that true uh, uh, on the tackle for for the Tigers? He and Aiden Dickey, uh, again, two, uh, two of the impressive sophomore linebackers that uh, will be players in coming years. Yeah. Uh, true, a, a really nice athlete that plays a really good outside linebacker. So that's another Both baseball to watch. players, too. I just nice. want to add that in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'll just add that in. We'll, it'll be great to see him this spring. <laughs> Again, Haynes in the under center. Offset eye now. He's getting the snaps, hands it to the halfback coming through. Might have enough for their third first down of the game. It will. It'll take it all the way out to their 35 first down, Gallatin. Yeah, paid more hard on the tackle for the uh, for the Tigers there. Uh, nice pickup by Gallatin County. Again, guys, Gallatin County, you know, this is a program that is uh, – you know, had its struggles over the last uh, last six, seven years. Only four winning seasons in 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 the pro in program history, dating back to 2006. Um, so it's been tough sliding for this program. Haynes under center out of the wishbone gives it to the fullback this time. Dickey. Dragged down by uh, Aiden Dickey Aiden on, Dickey. on the tackle. Good tackle. There. <clears throat> well, we're going to have to expand our roster here, Murph, for the next few weeks yeah, we're here because a lot of to. guys are getting in here, and it's great to see. Giving guys varsity action here early in the season with the playoffs looming here in a few weeks, it's going to be a lot of fun. Good, good word, looming. Looming. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and seven, ball spotted at the Gallatin County 39. Again, Haynes under center, hands it off to the back coming through, out to about close to a first down. Don't think they'll give it to him. It'll be about a yard short. Call it fourth down and one now. They will go for it, I'm sure. Kingston. Third and one, I'm sorry. Freshman defensive end Kingston Brockett in on the tackle for the Tigers there on that play. Brockett, a tall, yeah. rangy, athletic, out, uh, defensive end, defensive tackle type. Uh, he's going to be another player that's going to be an important player in the trenches in the coming years for the Tigers. Fantastic basketball player as well. Third down and one, Gallatin in the wishbone. I think we're doing an Oklahoma game here from the 70s. They take <laughs> it out to midfield first down here. I could do my Keith Jackson impersonation. <laughs> Oklahoma Sooners, yeah. Billy Sims runs down the sideline. Yeah, It'll Billy be Sims, a, he was tough. He was. He, was, he was really good. First down, Gallatin County, about their fifth first down of the game, and that's the end of the third quarter. We'll stay right here with you. So also, Beachwood 50, Gallatin County nothing. Talking about uh, you know the RPI and the, yes. and the top four, uh, uh, Owensboro Catholic is number one in the RPI. How good are they? Do you think? Well, I think they're very good. Yeah, I think yeah. they are excellent. Uh, they're number three in the uh, in the state media poll, but number one in the RPI. They're five and zero. Last week they defeated six A Henderson County, uh, forty one to twenty one. Now Henderson County not 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 a great team, yeah. but it's a six A team, six sure. A squad. Big win uh, in that game. Here's this name again, Mark Talley, and it's uh, you know I think it's a name we're going to be paying close attention to uh, as we get closer to December. Atwell, uh, Brady Atwell, yeah. junior quarterback. 26 of 39, one interception, 446 yard wow. yards passing, and five touchdowns. Very similar to the Beachwood Tigers. They have an outstanding core of receivers. He is he is completing passes often and down the field to three receivers led by uh, Will Carrico, who is uh, considered one of the best receivers in the state. Uh, last week he had nine catches, 179 yards, and a touchdown. Wow. So those are names to remember, yeah. folks. If you're listening and you're going to be a part of this run with us, Brady Atwell, Will Carrico, a great combo down in Owensboro. Uh, tonight they're playing at Crittenden County, Crittenden County 2-2. Two so Owensboro Catholic should pick up their sixth win. Gallatin County takes over first and 10 at midfield. Going to take the ball inside the Beachwood territory on the handoff. Picks up about three yards, second and seven. I mean, 2A this year. Well, it yeah. is. It yeah. really Loaded. is. Yeah. Four really solid yes. teams for yes. sure. Yeah, and Mayfield uh, is, is uh, holding down number four in, 
in both the RPI and in the media poll. Uh, they're three and one. They had a bye last week, but tonight they, they are facing the not so good Henderson County squad. Mm. Um, so they should pick up their fourth win of the year. Second and seven, Haynes on the keeper, or gives it to the fullback, I'm sorry. Then that was uh, Chad Hahn. Chad picks up another first down there for Gallatin County. Takes it to the Beachwood 34, call it. Oh, I'm sorry, 35, first and 10. Uh, Murray, currently number five. They're in not the, bad in the either. No, yeah, they're, yeah. they're four and one. They picked up a win last week uh, due to a forfeit. Fulton County had the forfeit. Uh, tonight they're taking on 6A McCracken County. So, you know, that's another thing yeah. you have to watch because if they beat McCracken County, which I don't know, I don't. Maybe, maybe yeah, they yeah. could, but I don't think they will. But if they do, that's a big RPI win for them. They could move them up a little bit further. Sure is. Haynes on our center again, first and 10. Oh, Gallatin boy. fumble. Beachwood Tiger tried to get in there, 22. Brody Eller tried to get in there, could not. Gallatin's going to keep possession but lose about five yards on the play. Take it all the way back to the Beachwood 40, second and 15. So what game's homecoming? Last home game of the year. Is homecoming? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I forget who's that's that against. Bracken. That's, that's Bracken against Bracken. Bracken. Yeah, That'll yeah. be a fun game. Yeah. No, we're at Bracken, I thought. Uh, no, we are at Carroll County. Oh, that's okay. right. That's okay. right. October 13th. <clears throat> Second and 15, Gallatin County, ball on the Beachwood 40. I formation. Haynes flips it to the halfback, takes it out for, picks up a, some good yardage, cuts it back to the right, takes it down about the 30, give him a, after uh, the penalty yards, or after uh, the loss, about a 10-yard pickup, it'll be, Third down, though, no, call it about seven. Yeah, Coach Holker uh, moving players in and out, getting some of his younger players <clears throat> some playing time here tonight. Looks like uh, Ty Horline uh, just uh, came out. He was in on the last tackle. Ty Horline, a sophomore defensive end, defensive tackle. Anthony Haynes is not a QB. It's Joe Roberts. He's in the Wildcat. It's third down and seven. The snap is Man. low. Joe picks it up, and it's going to be a keeper, and there's really not a lot of room there. Might get one yard. Takes it down about the Gallatin County 30. It's going to be a fourth down and five. I'm sure the Wildcats will go for this. Yeah, again, the snapping uh, tonight yeah. just on special teams and on offense here, especially late on offense, has really hurt this Gallatin County team. You know, they're trying to keep – trying to keep the ball and run as much much clock as they can so they can get to the bus and get yeah. home without uh, this getting much worse, but uh, definitely not helping their cause, the, the snapping game. 9-10 to go in the game. Beachwood 50, Gallatin County nothing. Haynes in the shotgun, looks back to the coach for the play. He needs a six-yard play here on fourth and five. That's what I would call something that gets six yards. Haynes gets a snap. He rolls back, has some time, throws to his right, complete. Can Joe get there? No. Nope. Joe Roberts tried to cut the ball there, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Beachwood will take over first and 10 at their own 30. And nice was, tackling over there. Yeah, Brody yeah. Aylor on, on the tackle for the, for the Tigers there. Really nice tackle. And, again, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I will <clears> – <throat> I will point to, uh, you know, our friends from Lloyd High School uh, who both last year, you know, they, they, uh, they had an excellent team last yeah. year. Um, and, and um, you know, this year the same thing. They're in 3A, and they are just absolutely uh, running the ball down teams' throats. Yeah. But the problem is, is, you know, it's really hard to compete in football in, in Kentucky right now against good teams if you can't throw the ball. And right now, if, you know, for Gallatin County tonight, they just can't. They don't throw the ball, so this is a game they're never right. going to win. Right? Yeah. Now, Bo's in the shotgun now. He gets a stab, a jet sweep. They're coming across for, I believe, that Schuler. Nice now cut Paps. back. Paps. Yeah, Nathan Paps. Nice job by Paps here. Takes it out. Picks up about six yards all the way out to the beach with 36. All right, so when I see Nathan Paps, who's a freshman, uh, the guys I think about are Luke Erdman, uh, John Odom, yeah. uh, Logan Castleman, uh, you, all these guys that have played over the year that might not have, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest size, but mm -hmm. they play much bigger than their body yeah, uh, yeah. shows. And Nathan Paps will be a great running back uh, wide receiver for now this team. He's been team. dealing with some injuries. Yeah, yeah. he's hurt. Yeah. He's got a hip flexor, I believe, and he's been struggling with that. But, man, he is a serious burner out of the backfield. Now, Bo under team. center, hands it off to Bo Brody Ayler. Brody's going to pick up again. Good yardage on second down, enough for the first down. Takes it out to about the Beachwood 42, first and 10 Tigers. Clock is running 7.52 in the game, 50 zip, Beachwood. And we got Will Shings in at right tackle for the Tigers right now. I can't see the, it looks like number 72 at, at right guard. Mark, can you see who that yeah, is on no. your roster, 72? 72, I don't have okay. one, sorry. Okay. We've got to get the freshman on yeah. here. Now, Bo under center again. 
Gets us out, pitched out to the left, student body left. Nice blocking out there. Brody Ayler's going to get some good positive yards past midfield in the Gallatin County territory. The old student body left play, like it. Yeah, sometimes it's just you go as basic as possible and great things happen. Brody Ayler takes the ball all the way into Gallatin territory. The ball is going to be spotted on the Gallatin County 47. New district here for the Tigers, District 5. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, you know it's it's tough to the, the the move to this district is uh, takes us from a weak district to a weaker district. Ayler under center. I'm sorry, that's Bo under center. Hands it off to the eye back. Takes it down about the 40 yard line. Picks up about seven on first down. It's good to see yeah. this. In, in essence, our freshman team out here playing well. Yeah, good good blocking up front by this, uh, this these young offensive linemen. Um, you know, and this is this is a big night for them yeah. to be able to to play most of this second half and and uh, and do well, which is what they're doing right now. So and what you're watching what right now is exactly why the JV season. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yes. It was like yeah. they're going to play yeah. so exactly. much on Friday. Yeah. Exactly, that's a good point. Again, uh, under shotgun, bows and shotgun gets a snap, looks who's left, throws complete. Ooh, Ooh. just dropped. Schuler had his hands on it. Ty had his hands on it. Just out of his hands, though. That would have been enough for a first down. Call it third down now and three ball on the Gallatin County 40. So, so Bo Souter, uh, you know, the thing with him is, is um, uh, I, I would kind of just describe him as a, uh, a Cam Hurriet very light. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in terms of he is a dual threat. Is he uh, Sean's brother? I'm he sorry. is Sean's younger yeah. brother, okay. yes. Okay. And Fair he, he can move with the ball. Last night in the freshman game, 75-yard uh, touchdown run right wow. up the middle against Dixie uh, wow. to put the Tigers ahead for good. Bo Souter hands it to the second back through. That'll be Brody Ayler. Brody's going to get enough for the first down. Going to be real close. See if they'll give it to him. They do. But First and 10 Tigers ball spotted on the Gallatin County 37. But Bo, one of the many players on, on, uh, on the Tigers roster that's been playing football for a long time. Yeah. He's played multiple positions. Uh, when he was younger, he was a, he's he played tight end. He's played on the line. He's played, he's played fullback. So he knows football. He's got a lot of years behind him. And now he's kind of grown into this, you know, kind of, you know, prototypical quarterback body, yeah. uh, and he can just move and throw the ball and, and, and lead. So he's going to be a star for years here. And the shotgun hands again Look at that. over to uh, oh, Brody man. Ayler. Brody Ayler, tough to bring down. Another run of at least 12 yards. Takes it down to the Gallatin County 25. Nice run there by Brody Ayler. Another first down for the Tigers. 4.34 to go in this game. Clock has been running since about the second quarter, I believe. Uh, final company can't play 61 to nothing over Holmes. That was a running clock game. Ooh. And again, as we spoke of, matchup similar to this. That's a game that Holmes, uh, with our current situation, is never going to win. Bo again hands it off to number 22, Brody Ayler. Takes it around the left-hand side. He was very patient there. He waited for the blocking to open up. Picks up about a good, nice four-yard pickup on first down. Second and six. Checking in on Simon Kenton. Pioneers. Come on, Pioneers. Yeah. Win out. Them and the Colonels, the Erlanger Colonels. Yeah. Oh, no, it's Dixie Colonels. <laughs> Dixie I'm sorry, Colonels. Dixie Colonels. I'm sorry. Simon Kenton up 36-7 early in the third quarter over Dunbar. Okay. Come um, on, Pioneers. Like Dixie Heights, 53-0 uh, over Boone County. That's a final. Second down to six. Bo under center. Hands it to the fullback Harden. this time, and he might go. Come Parton's on, Parton's inside the 10, down about the 9. Big hole, nice play. First and goal, Tigers. Oh, man, Parton's a little slow getting up. Ah, hope he's all right. Officials call a timeout. They're going to come out and check on Parton after that nice run there. Uh, taking a look at some of the other, uh, some of the other um, in the state media poll, some of the other rankings uh, in in uh, single A football. Raceland uh, currently number one, Pikeville number two, uh, and Campbellsville number three. Our friends from Campbellsville, yes. one of the one of the coolest. That was fields. that that state Coach, semi. What did you think of that field? Man. Remember that? Campbellsville? Oh yeah, yeah that yeah. was crazy. Yeah, For cool the old, old yeah. stadium. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah the, the outfielders. What an adjustment yeah. playing in that outfield yeah. was, man. Uh, so that's single A uh, in 3A football, Christian Academy, Louisville, and their great quarterback, Cole Hodge, currently holding the top spot. Uh, they're 4-1. and one. They got 20 out of 21 first-place votes. Bell County, uh, number two, they got the other first-place vote. And Lexington Catholic, number three. Uh, in 4A football, Boyle County, who many think, um, yeah. you know, with their superstar, Montavin Quisenberry, who's probably the best player in the yes. state, uh, they are 5-0. and Corbin's uh, good, too, aren't Corbin's they this year? Corbin's very yeah. good. Corbin knocked off Frederick, 6A Frederick Douglass last week, 6 to nothing. Wow. Yeah, how about that one? Yeah. Corbin uh, in, in the number two slide in 4A football with uh, three, five first-place votes. Uh, hold on, let me – no, three first-place votes. They're 4-0. And Cuff Cath, number three. 
5-0. and with a, uh, They did not pick up a first-place vote. But that's going to be an interesting yeah, sure because is. my understanding, and I, and I need, to, of course, I will naturally spend 15 to 20 hours research this week, <laughs> that we Boyle County and Corbin are on the opposite side oh, from Tough Cats. Yeah, so okay. Tough Cats so they'll have to play each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Yes. All right. Tigers come out after the injury department. The good news is he was able to walk off under his own power. Tigers take over first and 10. 324 to go in this game, Man, 50 to nothing. Mark I, and Coach, I'd love to see these young guys pick up a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bo in the shotgun. Hands it to the back coming through. There Takes it, it to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, there 1. There it is. Touchdown. Tony, Nathan Paps with the touchdown. Nathan Paps, nice run there. 10-yard run for the Tigers. Yeah, and great blocking on yeah. the right side of the line. I believe that was Cole Hoskins and maybe jo uh, um, Jacob Bishry at right guard, Hoskins at right tackle. Uh, just a really nice job opening up the way. Colin Morris at center, uh, just great blocking there to open the way for uh, for uh, Nathan Pabst, his that first makes, varsity touchdown. That is great for him. First, uh, that, that'll be 56 zip Beachwood now, 3.09 to go in the game. Clock stops here for the extra point. It'll start up again here. Beachwood is going to go for two instead of keep kicking extra points here. So, yeah, it looks like the offensive line, uh, Morris, Colin Morris at center, Jacob Bishry right guard, Cole Hoskins at right tackle. And the Beachwood Tigers take a knee on that extra point, and that is good. The score stays 56 to nothing here. We're going to have a fun have, you know, even though we're going to have a lot of these kind of games, but, man, the playoffs are coming. They and are I love right playoff football, man. Absolutely. It starts getting cold. Oh, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Start I don't know about that. I, oh, I don't like the cold weather. We're going to be up here. Yeah. Chilly. How about chilly? <laughs> yeah. Chilly. Yeah. Yeah. Hoodie you. weather. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about the hoodies. That's good. That's good. Um, guys, just continuing on the, on the rankings. In 5A, yeah. Bowling Green holds the top spot barely over – Highlands, uh, Bowling Green. And LCA beat them, didn't they, on the first game yes. of the season? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bowling Green, six first place votes are three and two. Uh, they moved to number one. They were in the two spot last week. Highlands, uh, now number two. They moved from three to two. They got more first place votes, but uh, they they only uh, total votes. They came in second to Bowling Green. Uh, they're four and one, soon to be five and one. They're beating Cooper pretty good tonight yeah. from what I'm hearing. And South Warren at number three. And 6A, Louisville St. X. Uh, three and one in the number one spot, and then Mail and Manual in the two and three slots. Where's our friends from Trinity? They've kind of dropped down yeah. there. I heard. They, that, uh, I was reading the other day. I think they were like thirteenth or something. Really? Crazy. Yes. Wow. Dude, yes. Don't see that often. No. I want to tell everybody out there yes. too that uh, Murph's notes and and stats are amazing. <laughs> they're, 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 Absolutely they are amazing. <laughs> Colson Lair with a, the kickoff. It's a labor off. of love. It's it a is, man. He, project. he does his yeah. work. He does work. Gallatin County fields and oh, takes it out to about the man. 23. Nathan Paps with just a terrific special teams tackle. And, again, just nothing more than – and, again, remember, he's dealing with a hip issue right now. He's the fastest player on the field right now. He is, again, like Luke Erdman, like James Cusick, legit top-level college track uh, sprinter. Speed. I mean, just yeah. a great play right there. And, again, just uh, excited for all these young guys to get to play tonight. And, Coach Gray, you yes. know how he has to – if he's over there in our other room, he has to tape him up on the wall. He's got a half a roll of tape up it's, there. It's, he's uh, doing work. Yeah, you, know? I, Katie's you do a good Katie, job, Katie's man. Katie's expressed concern for my <laughs> mental status. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. I remember Nazario last year, he saw me doing it for the first time. He said, what is this? He's like, are you okay? It's impressive. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, that's funny. Power eye formation here for Gallatin. Ball is spotted first and 10 for them on their own 23-yard line. Beachwood's going to go to 5-1 and one on the season. Nice way to start this year. Gallatin hands off to the tailback through, and Brody Ayler says hello and tosses him for a three-yard loss, two-yard loss. All right, we got some other freshmen in. Jake Holbrook uh, in at right corner. Jake Atmore in at uh, linebacker. Uh, let's see, getting some I'll tell you here. what, the small amount I've seen. Andrew, that, Andrew Hamlin in at linebacker. That bow. And that Brody Ayler are going to be some players now. Absolutely. Be, uh, Brody's, well, had, Brody's had a heck of a night. Yeah, yeah. he sure has. Really yeah, has. I mean, there's listen, there's, there are, you know, we talk about the weapons at this level. That's that freshman, eighth grade freshman, sophomore level's got some serious weapons as well. Gallatin County second and 11. The quarterback is just going to keep it, and they have started up the buses. Yes, they have. Going to They've, get out of here here, one a, 11 to go in the game. They put on the turbo booster yeah. and <laughs> hoping to get back down south with, with the quickness. Ball spot is still at about the 23. Peyton Moorhart, sophomore nose tackle in on the last tackle. That's his, I believe, his second tackle of the night. 
believe this is going to be the last play of the game. We're down to 50 seconds, and Gallatin is in no hurry. Also, I want to give a quick congratulations to our uh, our girls' soccer team. They're 9-5-2 nice. and having a terrific year. Uh, they were 2-0 and this past week with wins over Scott and Bishop Rossert. Great. Great to see. Gallatin's handoff goes out. It's third down. Picks up about five yards, and that is might do it. They might have I to snap it start one more time. The 50. Yeah, they sure are. So That's that, going to be the ball game. So that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good call, Mark. 56-0. <laughs> I, I went out there on. On a limb yes. there and said ball game, yeah. Yeah, 56 to nothing. final here at Beachwood High School. Beachwood knocks off Gallatin County in the first game of district play with the win. Beachwood moves to 5-1 and one yeah. on the season. Gallatin County falls to 3-2. and two. Uh, More importantly, Beachwood now 1-0 and oh in district play, and Gallatin County 0-1. Uh, we'll pay attention to the two games uh, that uh, comprise the rest of the 2A District 5 schedule. Uh, as we said, Walton Verona was trailing Bracken County 14 to nothing. Uh, we haven't seen a score yet from uh, Carroll County and Owen County. Uh, that, that'll be interesting to see. Again, we'll learn a little bit more about what the, what the rest of the season is going to be like when we see those scores because I think the scores that we see tonight will be pretty consistent with the rest of the year. So, yeah. uh, But great game by the Tigers tonight. Again, doing, doing what you got to do yeah, in games right. like this. You know, the, the, the first string, they did their job. Again, we talked about executing on defense, getting the ball in the end zone, not, not uh, playing down to your – to, to the level of your opponent, yep. uh, and then getting the young guys in and getting them reps and getting them confidence, uh, you know, and, and, you know, we saw a lot of great play from some of these young guys. So yeah, all great in all, to see. Yep. All in all, a great night here. Well, let's be Beach honest, Florida. too, it was total class. Yeah. Totally, by, by totally. Coach yes, yes and, it was. And his staff, and, uh, they, you know, obviously he kept it as, like, as low as he could. Yes. And, man, I got to tell you, man, I, I mean, how good – Urban and Fryman. Fryman is a freshman. Urban's a junior. They're all back next year, and Cusick's back. Yeah, Clay Hayden yeah. is back. I mean, I tell you what, this year now, and, I mean, how we played against Cove Cath, I'm thinking we're going to have a Absolutely. good run here. Yep. I want to see I us play in LCA in the state semis down there. I'd love to go and that game bring trip. them on it'll be yeah. fun heck yeah yeah it's uh it, it's it's going to be a fun it's going to be a fun uh year this year just to see what this team can do yeah uh, you know a, again I, you know it's going to be such a it's going to be really fun to watch these playoffs this year because as coach gray alluded to earlier in the second half i mean the 2a at the top is yep, loaded it I mean, is you've just got great teams great individual players you know lca's got cutter Bowley and uh uh, Brady Hensley, yeah. Mayfield has uh, uh, Zane Cartwright, yep. and Juju Stark. We've seen those guys yeah. for like five years. It yeah. seems like Juju. Owen, Owensboro, He's, they're good players. And then Owensboro Catholic, kind of the uh, new player to yeah. the party. They come in with you know Brady Atwell, who's putting up you know Clay Hayden type numbers. Sure, sure is. He's doing it against good teams too. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they've got some a similar receiving core to us. So uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing seeing how the season goes. But all these little things that are happening right now are going to play a part in what the what the RPI looks like in the last game of the the season and and how the playoffs uh, sh shake up. So again, we're gonna we're gonna root for Simon Kent. We're gonna root yep. for Cupcap. We're gonna root Dixie. for our friends from Dixie to get uh, to get as many for those teams to get as many wins as they can, especially against higher yeah. ranking or higher class teams. Um, you know, because they all it, every little bit helps. No Not doubt a about question it. In the yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. What round do they? Use the RPI. They kick the RPI back in, I believe, in a third round, Murph. The first two are not. Yeah, I, it's, the, it's the third round. Yeah. The third round is when So is, is the playoffs, the first two rounds, you play the same teams in your yeah, district? Yeah, pretty again? much. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. And then, yeah, and then it'll switch over to RPI. RPI. Yeah. And they, that'll be an interesting game in the quarterfinals, but the real game is going to be in the state semis. Whoever it's against, and I know I'm, I'm going way ahead here, but whoever that's going to be is going to be a great ball game. Yeah, Can't well, wait. I mean, again, you're just talking about four teams that are – are uh, really, really talented and experienced, and uh, you know it, it's you know it's going to be the <laughs> yeah. it's going to be a, a, a fight to the end. Uh, you know the last, the last, there's going to be two teams that don't make it to Kroger Field that are going to you know that are going to be pretty upset because they're they're going to be close. You know, I, I mean yep. there's a very thin margin between all four of those teams. And I gotta say, Coach, man, I'm jealous of Tyler out there, Fryman. Check out that hair. 
I mean, he's sporting a mullet. Nice he's got the yeah. flow he, going. He, oh, yeah. Man, I'm he jealous. He and Sout are yeah. both. They got some really <laughs> strong cuts. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. yeah but, uh, but again, we're all uh, jealous up here. We are because we, we couldn't do that yeah. then or now. <laughs> but again, I, you know, I mean, just kind of to focus on the on the young players right now. I mean, we got to see some of the players that will be superstars in yeah. coming years. Uh, we got a preview of what Bo Souter looks like. No doubt. Uh, we got a preview of uh, you know of, of Nathan Paps. Mm-hmm. We you know got a preview again. We seen him a couple times this season. We know how good he is at the JV level. Uh, and Brody Ayler, yeah. you know, Aiden Dickey, Zach True, and you know all those guys. Chase McDaniel, who's kind yeah. of a, kind of one of those one of those players that kind of came out of nowhere, but because of his athleticism and the, his coachability, yeah. obviously, you know, he's he, he's having a great season, by putting on the pads for the first time, I believe, ever. So wow. again, but but again, I think all that kind of goes back to tip your cap to Jay Volker and the yeah. staff for the great job that they've done with this this team this year. I mean, five and one. Uh, you know, as, as you said, yeah. to, to go through that gauntlet of the you know no the first doubt. five games and wow. come out four and one. I mean, we'll that says quite it. a bit. Uh, you know, so I I just think they uh, once again. You know, that, that staff as a whole, uh, you know, just doing just a, a terrific job having these kids ready week in and week out. Well, thanks, everyone, again for tuning in. We'll be on YouTube for two more weeks in a road game, then back here for Can't homecoming. Wait. Can't wait. Yeah, and uh, YouTube for all the home games until the playoffs. Thanks, everyone, again for tuning in. And next week, we're right back here at 54 Beachwood Road, taking on the Walton Verona Bearcats. 7.30 kickoff broadcast starts at 7.15. Uh, boy, uh, real quick, happy yep. birthday, Brody Huth, uh, one of my sixth graders and All a fantastic right. young Tiger. Uh, plays on the uh, place for the Spartans. They're going for uh, another shot at another Super Bowl. I believe it'll be their fourth in a row. Wow. But Brody Huth, fine young man, Good. great Spartan, will be a uh, will be a, a big part of this Beachwood football program in the future. Happy birthday to him. Uh, good luck to the Spartans this weekend. Yeah. Go Tigers. All right. Yep. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, Coach. Yep, Thanks absolutely. for having us. See you all next week. Walton Vernon Bearcats right here. Thanks for tuning in.